Do you like me? <laughs> Never mind, eh? This week, we heard that a maniac bit off part of a policeman's face, but that didn't get much publicity. We heard that a boy of three was clinging to life after the person that ran him down just kept on driving, but that didn't get much publicity. We heard that two yobs shot a dog twice in the head with nine-inch bolts from a crossbow after using it as target practice, but that didn't get much publicity. We heard that teenagers poisoned the water bowsers erected in the streets to give drinking water to communities whose taps had been turned off. They peed in them and poured bleach in and emptied the others by smashing the taps, but that didn't get much publicity. We heard that three people tortured a defenceless man with learning difficulties and threw him off a hundred foot viaduct to his death, but that didn't get much publicity. We heard that a lorry driver was killed after some kids thought it would be fun to drop a concrete block on him as he drove under a bridge, but that didn't get much publicity. We heard that a man was shot in the face for pointing out that you're not supposed to smoke inside, but that didn't get much publicity. And we heard that a gang of hoodies hunted down a 16-year-old boy and shot him like a pack of savages, but that didn't get much publicity. At least, not compared to the big stories of the week, a little whale got lost in one of our rivers and couldn't find its way out and had to be put to sleep. And a bullock with a name faced its fate in the abattoir. And it had a necklace made of flowers, too. Ah! Welcome to jolly old England, Luce. Aww, We've got priorities, we just don't know where they are right now. I felt sad for poor Shambo. Oh, shut up. I did. Mm-hmm. All people wailing and crying and... It was not a happy start to the show. I just had to get... It was in me and I had to get it out. <laughs> we can now... Put all of that behind us and mm. look forward to um, a super happy time over the next three hours. Isn't that right? No. <laughs> oh, it is right. It's raining outside. How did that happen? I know. It's a surprise, isn't it? However. Oh. Good news? Good news? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, now, you have to temper your enjoyment and your uh, pleasure of what I'm about to say so. by uh, the knowledge that this is being predicted by the same experts who mm. predicted at the beginning of the year that it was going to be one long, record-breaking, hot, dry summer. You know, those people. Yeah, the heat wave that never came. Summer is on its way, but only if you live in the South. Everybody, ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> Early August, that's next week. Could be a scorcher in southern counties while the rest of the country gets another soaking. <laughs> Serves them right for being northern. Uh, Gloucestershire in particular can expect another downpour before the uh, uh, weekend is through, though not on the scale of recent rain. Well, apparently it's going to rain for an hour, hour upon endless hour. It started when I came through. Oh, you know the other thing? <gasps> oh, it's getting darker earlier. Oh, no. I hate that. It Don't was, notice it. I Try not know. to notice it. Well, you can't help it. Last week when I came oh. in, it was bright. It was uh, almost uh, like an afternoon when I came in at sort of 9.30. Nine mm. This week, dark. Is it? Was it actually dark when you came yes, in? Yes, I would c classify... Well, not pitch dark. I mean, yeah. you know, you could... Getting there. Yeah, you could still um, uh, find your fags. Yeah, on, oh, the, few. on the car floor. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, it, yeah, it seemed like the evenings were closing in. Oh, that's so awful, because even if we get a nice bit of sun now, we mm -hmm. won't get the nice warm evenings. Correct, yes. Because it's about, the warm evenings yeah. we like. Mm -hmm, I know. Oh. You'll find me super glued to my exquisite balcony mm. of a warm evening, but we ain't going to get no then no more. No. Not nor nothing. Is it going to rain tomorrow? Um, I'm glad you asked. I've got no idea. Oh, great. Uh, the Met Office <laughs> chiefs discussed our washout summer, the wettest since 1789 at London's Science Media Centre yesterday, but there is a ray of good news. Chief meteorologist Ewan McCallum said... Oh, dear, there's your tea backing up on me. <laughs> a little light wind coming in. Don't blame the tea. <laughs> <laughs> said that um, early August it will dry up in the south. Unfortunately, the next few days are very unsettled. Well, we've uh, become uh, accustomed to that. Met Office called the rain a once-in-a-200-year event caused by uh, the jet stream running farther south than usual, blah, blah, blah. We don't want the excuses. We just want to find the guilty parties and commence the thrashing. <laughs> Do you, sir, may I have another? <laughs> 
Oh, well, I wanted to know if it was raining tomorrow because I'm going to see the GGs in Ascot. The GGs? Yeah. <coughs> really? Yeah. Uh, Ascot, eh? Mm. Isn't it Ascot? Is it Ascot? Ascot? Must you not say cot? You must say cut. Well, what, what is it tomorrow? Is it just any old horsey? It's Hong Kong Day. Oh, Hong Kong Day. Yeah. Oh, apparently. that's very good. What's Family that? Family fun. Family oh, fun yeah. for every gambler in the family. <laughs> There's face painting and everything you can enjoy. <laughs> what? Apparently. Really? <laughs> Apparently so. Uh, what, Obviously, I shall be rushing to have a dragon painted on my face. Yeah, quite. <laughs> well, to get the kids um, gambling at an early age. <laughs> I guess. It's going to be handing out free cigarettes as well. What do you wear to Hong Kong Day at Ascot? Um, I just don't know at all. Well, a dress, so something floaty and Must chiffony. I? But know. we're in the cheap bits. I mean, you could um, put on one of those... Um, Kate Moss Essentials that you bought down the top. Did you get any of those Kate Moss Essentials, Lose? No. Why not? Because <laughs> I never could have fitted into them. <laughs> well, they, they probably I would do, have looked like mutton. They probably do... bangles. You could squeeze one of them over one of your fat little hands, Lose. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> one of those big tent floaty dresses. Yeah, that that's right. Nice. I'm sure they do a caftan in, uh, you know, <laughs> triple extra large for you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, so uh, I'll just wear trousers then. <laughs> yeah, culottes. Have you got culottes? No. Good. They're horrible. The ones to the knees? Well, no, no. culottes, they're, they're like a dress that's yeah. been cut up the middle and sewn. They're like gigantically wide trousers that don't quite reach the ankles, aren't they? I used to work with a, yes. a, a woman who used to wear culottes all the time. We were just laughing hysterically, <laughs> constantly at her. Not because of the culottes, just because she was, you know, a giant pain in the neck. Oh. <laughs> Practically made me give up this business. Single-handedly, she did. Oh, really? that was back in the dark days, yes. Oh, you liked her, then? No one liked her. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, if th this was a, a, a station that I worked... Um, well, I better not tell you which part of the day I worked, because that would pinpoint the station. Mm. But um, Just it, once it, upon it, a time. it was one of my first jobs, and it was a very important uh, programme on the station. You know, mm. one of those important programmes. Not like this. Stuck out. Was it possibly <laughs> earlier in the day? Yeah, a little bit earlier in the day, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and the big name who was doing a drive uh, pr promised to walk out of the building and never return if she was put on his show, so she stayed on mine. Oh. What a hellacious <laughs> year that was. <laughs> I kept looking for her name on, um, you know, on uh, the, the credits for programmes. I've never found it. Ah, so she, you don't think she's working in the business anymore? Well, uh, either that or she's uh, married. She... <laughs> <laughs> she, Someone she tricked rescued some her. poor sucker into marrying her, <laughs> and she changed her name. And you're delighted for her? Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Not him, mind. I'm sorry for him. Delighted yeah. for her. She found someone. Everyone's thrilled. No one can believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you had a good week? Yeah. Uh, it's been okay. I, I'm finding, actually, with the weather a bit, that my weeks are kind of rolling into one. Nothing is very outstanding at the moment. Yeah, well, that's because we're not doing any summary things. Yeah. As soon as you see a ray of summer, and write this down, because it's very important, I want you to put your hands in the air and run, screaming, outside, immediately and quickly, divesting yourself of anything that won't get you arrested. Just grab any hint of sun mm. as soon as you can. Vitamin D, we're all deficient in it. Mm. Well, I'll just add it to the things that I'm deficient in. <laughs> I'll add it to the list of the things that I'm going to complain to my doctor about when I go and see him next, which will be, oh, I don't know, Monday morning, first thing. Any day. <laughs> yeah, I have a standing appointment every day, nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. <laughs> yeah. Occasionally, a day will come uh, and I'll wake up and I think, oh, well, you know, not, not feeling so bad, and I'll cancel that day's appointment, but make, <laughs> make absolutely certain that, you know, it's like Sky Plus, you put the, the series um, record on, yeah. You know Sky Plus? Oh, I the, love that. The yeah. series record is fantastic. Yeah, and it just automatically records too. every uh, subsequent series. I'm like that with my doctor's appointments. It's on a series record, 9 o'clock every, every morning. <laughs> morning! Right, here's the list for today. Eyes raised to the roof. <laughs> I did go to my, to my previous GP. My current GP, he's excellent. He hasn't exploded yet. It's marvellous. Um, my previous one, uh, the, just before I left him, hmm. uh, because, you know, not because uh, our relationship had turned sour, but just because I moved, <laughs> I, I did walk in the door and I caught his eyes raised to the ceiling. Did like, you really? Yeah. I, I, did you say anything? No, I didn't. But he, he must have thought... I, it was painted all over his face. He was thinking, oh, oh not this bloke again. <laughs> so when you requested a new doctor, he all too happily oh, signed you off. yeah, through a party. <laughs> I wasn't invited. <laughs> Oh. I did manage to squeeze in one summary thing uh, this week, though. It was a barbecue. Oh, did you? Mm. Was it Gosh, this week? when did you manage that? Was it this week? 
Actually, yeah, did I have one? Um, I might have had... But the thing is, did you eat outside as well? Or did you just do the barbecuing outside? Because I found well, that to be a bit weak. of a tightrope. Yeah, well, it, if, you, if you start early enough on in the day, mm. then you can uh, squeeze the eating and the cooking both outside. Mm. But <laughs> it seems absolutely pointless, doesn't it? Cook outside and then come in to eat. Mm. I mean, what's the point in that? Oh. But if you start too late, I mean, if you start at the point at which you're hungry, you know, you have a few drinks and you sit there uh, looking at the, uh, the, the, the view, looking at the clouds, drifting by, thinking... Groovy. <laughs> If you wait too late, then it's too cold to eat out. Or yeah. it starts raining mm. again. So tedious. And you know whose fault that is? Whose? <laughs> yes, that's right. Ever since he took over, it's been raining on a daily basis. Have you <laughs> noticed? Every single day since he took over, it's been raining. It's got to be his fault. You know, when to e it were gone when I were a lad. We had Tony. Phony Tony. Oh, things were so great when Phony Tony was in charge because he could tell us any old tripe with a smile and a glint in his eye and we'd believe it. Swallow it whole, we would, and the sun was always shining and there were buttered scones for tea. Do you remember? <laughs> eee, it were like grand. James, tell me this is your act. Here's our first call in Crawley. Hello, Richard. Oh, hi, Nick. Richard. Um, it was interesting to hear you talking about the weather, that it's going to be really good in the south, uh, not so good in the north. Well, that's what they're saying. Yeah, and you're, you're saying something similar uh, with Agent Chris the other day as well, uh, that whenever you look at the weather map, it, 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 it looks really good in the south, but not so good at... There definitely is a north-south divide, yes. Us soft southerners uh, can bask in, um, in a warm breeze, but uh, up north, where they're made of sterner stuff, they, um, well, they bask in a freezing cold breeze in their T-shirts, normally. You seemed uh, a bit too uh, happy about it, I think, too. Well, you took me seriously, did you? Well, no. Uh, but on a, on a sort of more serious uh, point, uh, do you think, uh, no, you know... Do you think it is an issue? Do you think people are just really bothered about uh, the, uh, you know, the North and the South? Like, they always used to be a big deal, didn't they? What did? Uh, you no, know, North hating the South and vice versa. Everybody hates everybody else. The North hates the South and the, uh, I mean, even in uh, in Wales, the, the people in the North of Wales hate the people in, in the South of Wales. We can't tell the difference. But they, uh, but 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 they certainly can. The people in the north of Italy hate the people in the south of Italy. The people, um, anybody that lives near anybody else, hates their neighbours. That's just the way of the world, it, because we're all tribal. You know, it's uh, it, it's back down to uh, cave uh, caveman time. The people on the cave in the cave on the right hate the people in the cave on the left. They're uh, indistinguishable to all but themselves. But uh, those tiny little differences are what makes the uh, what, in fact what makes all the difference. And uh, there you have the uh, history of the human race in a nutshell. One thing, one thing that uh, uh, I've listened to every show since you since you returned to LBC last year, and uh, one thing that you've talked about a lot is property. And uh, you know, you quite you, you often mention uh, executive flatlets with small cupboards or no cupboards even. Yeah, tiny windows. Yeah. Uh, and I think you I think I remember you saying that uh, people. You know, they're building so many flats in London, but the people actually want houses. Did you say that, or did I dream that? Um, they're building flats, but people want houses. You know, people actually prefer houses, but they're building loads of flats. Well, people of a certain type. I mean, once once people get married and they start having children, they want houses. They want a little garden in the back where a little Johnny can go and uh, strangle his strangle a cat. <laughs> All right. So maybe you did say that. Okay. Yeah, young people want flats. Uh, because they haven't got any possessions, and that's why developers don't give them any cupboards. Oh, right. So they actually get... The people are actually getting what they want, in a way. Nobody's getting what they want. No? People want space. They want light, they want space, they want uh, land, and no-one's getting any of that, apart from the Russians, who are buying, <laughs> buying up all of the space and the land and the light. Or oh, all the Blairs who got... And it will shortly be the Chinese and the Indians. But did you... Uh, I think the other day you said... Uh, Tony Blair and, and his wife, they've got, they're, they're, you know, they've, if, they, if you, you said if, they, if you had the money they have with those two houses that they've sort of put, put together, that you, they, you would actually uh, sell it and rent somewhere else. 
Yeah, if I had a five million pound house right in the centre of London, I wouldn't have a five million pound house in the centre of London. I'd, I'd be, well, I, th I think I'd um, be laughing so much that I'd just float. Wouldn't be, wouldn't require a house. What I'd was, create my own uh, eco bubble around myself. What was curious to me was that you were saying you would rent somewhere else. Yeah. As opposed to buying. Why did you say that? Uh, um, because if you if you got a five million pound house but no money in the bank, then you live uh, uh, in a nice place, but you haven't got any money to spend. If you've if you've got five million pound in the bank, then you can rent a super place and you've got a ton of money in the bank. Right. Anyway, Richard, I've got to go, mate. I thought I th you were saying something about the. Uh, no, definitely you know, not. But thanks for asking. I've got to go. Cheers, mate. Tell her I'm going to send him some um, caffeinated coffee in the post. He needs a, uh, or like or one of the, one of those. Um, what do they call those things that the that medical people use on, uh, on on those exciting medical dramas? They're always um, like rubbing those things together and putting them on their chest and going clear. <laughs> Send him one of those in the post. Wake up, mate. Here is no one. What are you doing, Luce? Just coming. <laughs> Hello, Trixie. Oh, it's I'm Trixie. Fine. I'll pop you through. Hey, you yeah, know what? A water company has just sent uh, <laughs> leaflets to um, its customers. 60,000 customers in the southeast of England have been sent leaflets by their water company. Um, many of these people are knee deep in water, and so their water company has sent them leaflets. Do you know what it's on? How to save water in the circumstance of a drought. <laughs> what timing? <laughs> How to cope with a drought? They sent out leaflets to 60,000 homes Bloody. who, presumably, all paid for those leaflets with uh, oh the extra money on their bills, because they don't send them out for free, do they? No. That's not too smart. I mean, apart from not actually being very helpful, that's just going to irritate people, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, right. You Go know, on. On, the, um, on the flats, we've got some new ones being built up around our area. Oh, yeah. And um, apparently a studio flat there is going to be £300,000 and in it, it's so small that there's a fold-down bed and a fold-down table, but you can't have them both down at the same time. <laughs> you have to choose. <laughs> I mean, obviously you probably wouldn't have them both down at the same time, but even so, isn't that daft? Well, it's incredible, really. I mean, the, the, amount of peop the amount of space that people are forced to live in now yeah. is getting smaller and smaller. You know, uh, like a, a two... Uh, bed flat now is something like 700 square feet. Elton John wouldn't have a toilet in his house that's 700 square feet. I mean, if you put 700 square feet down on on the ground and look at actually how much space it is, it's microscopic. Mm. And uh, and you know, and and the result is of all of these um, companies that are advertising self storage. Mm. You know, these big gigantic yeah. warehouses of places that they seem to be proliferating like uh, mad, don't they? Yeah. And the reason is because people are being forced into tiny little homes where they have got no room to put any of their stuff. It's because awful. yeah, because developers aren't providing uh, cupboards in much the same way as they're not uh, providing windows. There's a different reason. I mean, they're not providing cupboards because they're uh, they're very uh, tight. Mm -hmm. And they know that uh, people are desperate for a place to live, and so they're going to give them the minutest room possible because they know that the stuff will get snapped up because otherwise people will be in a cardboard box. Mm -hmm. They're not giving them any windows. I mean, apart from those, you know, uh, flats for uh, young couples that front onto the river, they're nothing but window. But uh, on, on, a, on a house, have you noticed how small windows on houses are getting these days? Yeah. I mean, if you look at a new development of houses, you actually have to stick your head out the window to be able to see some sky. They're tiny. Whereas in Wardian times, he used to have floor-to-ceiling windows that you could open the whole thing and it was in light. You know, you remember yeah. light, don't you? Lovely light came in. Windows. Exactly. Mm. These days, tiny little window. And do you know why? It's another one of these government target um, fiascos. I swear, every government target that has been um, uh, put in place by his toniness has come back uh, to um, slap us all in the face. They said that the homes must be eco-friendly. They must not uh, give off uh, a lot of heat from the inside. Mm. Government thinking was that what the developers would do were triple lag, triple put in uh, like triple uh, glazing on the glass and lag the walls and uh, you know put um, loft insulation in and just to really spend a lot of money on a lot of eco uh, credentials. But that's not what they did at all. They just like everybody else faced with the government target, just found a cheap way around it mm. by making the windows tiny, because that's where all the heat escapes, right? And so, that's what the... So, your tiny window in your brand new houselet 
It's Tony's fault. Mm. Oh. And they have no character either. Oh well, no, they all they all look exactly the same. That's what's such boxes. a shame, isn't it? <laughs> you can't sort of put your own stamp on it, even if you decorate it in no. different colours or whatever. No, they're all exactly the same. And if and if they're not all like those kind of identical Lego houses, mm. then they'll look like something uh, like a pastiche of something uh, villagey that used uh, you know yeah. like a half timbered yeah. executive home. And you'll hear all your neighbours next to you. <laughs> That's right. Through the paper thin of yeah. walls, which haven't been lagged because they got away with the meeting the target by making the windows so small. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> just blind. You just want to. You just want to pack up your bags and go, don't you? <laughs> well, except though, when I see that, I think, thank goodness, I don't have to live in that kind of way. But if you're oh, on absolutely. your own, I think it, it's so difficult because you've got to cough up all that money yourself, mm -hmm. which is nigh on impossible. Yeah. Well, uh, un if yeah, if you're on your unless own, you're a key or, or if, even if you're uh, ma unless well, unless you're uh, you work in the city, you know all those people mm. over there who don't pay any tax on the hundreds of millions of pounds that they earn. <laughs> it's just bugs in the middle that are paying all the tax. Unless you're one of those people, uh, or the uh, the incoming billionaires from Russia and China and India, they can afford no end of stuff. It's, uh, it's, it's the rest of us are being stuck out into little identical ghettos of blur. Oh, Why Blair. Was yeah, it was Tony Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was a clue right at the beginning. We should have uh, we should have figured that out before we <laughs> voted him in four times. <laughs> but I doubt that anybody else would have done uh, would have done any different, you know? Because unfortunately, politicians are just like us. I've said it over and over again, and it's uh, as true when I first said it as it is now. The people who are running the country are not running the country for the benefit of the people. The people who are running the country are running the country for the benefit of the people who are running the country. And we'd do the same. We'd put in our 200 grand in expenses claims, wouldn't we? We'd employ our uh, other half to be our, quote, secretary, just to, uh, just to get more <laughs> money from it. I mean, if you put all these possibilities in front of you, um, of course you're going to take it because we're human beings. Unfortunately, robots can't run us yet. Yeah, well... If only computers were smart enough to be able to make all the correct decisions to mm. churn down all of the possibilities for any given uh, course of action to determine what the majority of the people would like in each circumstance and then tell us what the uh, correct course of action would be, then uh, well, that would be great. Then we'd really be getting somewhere. Unfortunately, we're being run by people. It's people. You know, that movie, Soylent Green, they had the best idea. People should be um, chopped up into small pieces and served as soup. Am I right? Oh. <laughs> That's even more depressing. <laughs> dear, dear. All right, well, just certain people then. Okay. Like all of those people that I mentioned at the top of the show, for instance. Well, yeah. Apart from the cow and the whale. Yeah, not the poor cow. Yeah, but they're both dead right now, so. Oh, I know. Oh. Did the cow have to die? Really? Did it have to the die? Bull. Apparently, it was very, very ill. Yes, but th was it very, very ill in itself, though? Did it feel very ill? <laughs> because from what I no, but from what Did I anyone could, give it a questionnaire? Do you mean? <laughs> no, I don't mean that. But I mean, if it wasn't actually endangering other cattle, which yeah. it wasn't, mm -hmm. then why was it such a big problem? Just the fact that they had to enforce it because they do on farms. Well, he's not on a farm. Yeah, but Luce, how many cows and bullocks died this week? And it must be in the. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, I perhaps. I know, but we'd humanise Just because this one had a name. Yeah. Oh. Well, don't get um, obsessed about... Don't get too upset about cows. It's their own fault for being so yummy. Me love you a long time. And I really mean that, Trixie. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Except you just depressed me to heck. <laughs> oh, poor baby. I Stop know. Whining. You, you can be a, a, a miserable git sometimes. Mm -hmm. Please excuse the French. Hello. Trixie. But, yes, I French, know. is it? I always wondered. I know. I'm sorry. Probably from the Latin. Are you going to have a lovely song for me, too? There are no songs like, oh, Trixie. You've got to find a song for me. Um, <laughs> a song for Trixie. <laughs> Well... There's not going to be a song for Trixie. Well, there might be. <laughs> yes, I know. You've got to put, put a silly one up. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Be careful f of what you wish for. Exactly. <laughs> you may... It may come true. You may yes. get it. Turn I wish around I and said that now. Kick you on the bottom. Yes. Yes, I, I, I still think that we, 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 we're separated at birth or something. Who, us? Yes, because of our, 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 our mutual sort of cholesterol and... 
and and hospital experiences and things. Seriously, have you heard about this new stat? They want everybody to take a statin pill. Yeah, uh, and at the same time, they told they told you that uh, statin pills will really kill you, extremely dead. Absolutely, yeah. you've read that too. Yes, you have probably have health up in your um, your computer as well, don't you at home? <laughs> yes, I've, I've read all those bits. Don't worry, I'll keep you fully informed. Hey, you know those uh, those you know. idiots who said that uh, if you eat a quarter of a grapefruit, you're going to really die. <laughs> Women get yes. After women will get breast cancer if yeah. they eat grapefruit. Well, that's what they said. Don't don't. Uh, and, I, and then I read an article that said, "Don't pay the slightest attention to those fools. They don't know what they're talking about." I can't stand grapefruit. Fortunately, oh, how can you not stand? Oh, the grapefruit's great. Well, I mean, I tried it out when it was really cheap. Oh gosh, many many years ago, and I just couldn't get into it. So that's <laughs> it. <laughs> couldn't get into it. It's no, I couldn't get into fruit. grapefruit. You know. You know, it, it's Every time I eat a grapefruit, it's as though uh, each fibre of my body is standing and applauding. It's just one of those things that you know <laughs> is good for you. If you think, if your body is telling you it's good for you, it is good for you. <laughs> it's true. How many old fibres you got in your body? You must have a lot of them. Six. Oh, really? Good. Listen to what your body's telling you. All right. Pay I attention. Promise. I promise, but I, I won't eat grapefruit because it says I don't like grapefruit, so I won't eat it. Have an anyway, orange. Anyway. They're going to make us pay more. For Have a lime, water. Trixie. Put it in uh, a margarita. Mm. I don't drink. Mm. Huh? I don't drink, sadly. You don't? No, I don't. You don't, don't have drink. a TV, do you? Why are you lapsing into American? I don't know. <laughs> What's I wrong just, with you? It just sort of seems right. Well, know? it isn't. It's wrong. It's Stop wrong. it. Okay, I, I, won't, I won't do that. I shall speak perfectly. You haven't got a TV either, have you? I, um, I have a TV, but I haven't had it switched on for such a long time. You don't watch TV, you don't drink, what do you do? Um, 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 if that's where you could put the, the little sort of, um, thing on. I, and I, at the moment, not very much. God, she's doing my <laughs> sound effects, is what she does. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. They, I'm, I'm really, really fed up to the back teeth of them making us pay more for our, for our water. They said they're going to put it up, but they made us pay more last year because uh, they, they, they were sealing all the holes, and now they're paying more because too much. We won't have had to be more because too much has fallen. I mean, when are they going to get it right? It's ludicrous, Nick. Oh, I don't know. Stop moaning, Trixie. I'm not moaning. I'm asking you. I'm Go on and pour yourself a stiff drink, dear. No, the, the answers to the questions. Um, I will... Uh, have a report on your desk by Monday, OK? Well, no, I expect this. I, r I expect it in triplicate. And don't bother to send it until it is. All right, right? I'll do my very best. And you find a song for me for next time. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. Isn't that right? Something like that. Thanks, so my, Trixie. My doctor's just as fed up as your doctor. Right, well, as long as it doesn't blow up while you're uh, actually visiting him, then uh, can't your... Uh, well, that's true, yes. Can't don't your yeah, lucky... That hasn't happened yet. Chickens. Bye-bye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Here is uh, Romford. Hello, James. Hello, mate. I'll just, I'll just pull over. Hang on a sec. Wow. Gantz Hill roundabout. Gantz Hill. Well, remember last time um, I ra I, I've just done a test. I phoned you exactly the same location. Um, you know the night that Lucy left me on hold for 54 minutes and I got back and, and, and I got drunk before I, I even got on air and then insulted Emily Maitlis? No. You probably don't remember, but you, <laughs> you, uh, you, you, you banked me off. But... Um, uh, I've only just been on hold for for, for seven minutes, and um, so I'm not even home yet. Right. Interesting. Fortunately, uh, no one cares. But no anyway. one. No one cares. You are on form tonight, though. I have to give it that to you, mate. Um, yeah. She just said you're you're always miserable, but I don't think it's I don't think it's miserable. You just you just say the truth, and sometimes the truth about this horrible, dingy world is miserable. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I hope that I don't, that when I say it, I'm not depressing people and that I'm trying to get funny out of it. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. the overall, I would hope that the overall tone of the show is amusing. And I'm, I'm not just yeah. talking about death and, and horror. But occasionally, um, I, all you have to do is read the news. All we're, all we're fed with is uh, death and horror. Yeah. Like, uh, that cow, um... Which one? Why, why, why they... Which the, caller the are you referring to? The cow, the, the cow martyr. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean... That, I uh, just, you know, that makes me think that we are all plugged into a big matrix and, you know, living out, you know, we're just like being farmed by some weird alien race. Yeah, you know? The Matrix uh, wasn't um, uh, a sci-fi film, it was a documentary. <laughs> yeah, 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 and Keanu Reeves was uh, Davy Attenborough. Well, <laughs> I think Keanu would, uh, would raise a finger of uh, displeasure at being... Uh, 
being compared with um, Saggy Dave. <laughs> Saggy Dave. Um, uh, Nick, well, uh, the reason I rang up is because um, I just got one of those, and I know I'm allowed to mention them, mate, because uh, LBC are, are giving them away and bigging them up. They're, they're the new Nokia uh, N95, all singing, all dancing. Oh, is that the thing with the sat-nav in it? Oh. Oh, it's great. Well, I want one to, of those. You have to pay a uh, subscription for the sat-nav, but it is well worth it. I, I use it all the time, because I'm from, I'm from the Midlands, but I live in London, so it's very, very useful. Uh, We're giving those away, Luce. Why can't I have one? Yeah. Seriously. Well, yeah, they're, they're worth I five, really mean it, too. They're worth <laughs> five hundred quid. But you Maybe if you just keep talking about it, we can fix that out. OK. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's as, just as fantastic as it looks. Yeah, and I watch TV on it and, uh, and all sorts. And um, it also has quite a lot of space, if you buy a memory card, to put music on, which brings me on to my point, which is why... Rock and roll! Rock and roll! Um, I've just downloaded uh, two of my favourite albums of all time, The Wild Hearts. The Wild Hearts? Yeah. What's that? Oh, no. Oh, I, I, I assured Lucy you'd know who The Wild Hearts were. The Wild Hearts? The Wild Hearts. Hmm. No. no. Nick, don't do this to me. Sorry. Oh, no. Who are the Wild Hearts? Oh, come on. Um, Give us a clue. Uh, Their name is... Uh, the, well, wild the, yeah. wild, the Wild Hearts. The Wild Hearts. Oh, the Wild Hearts! The Wild Never Hearts. Never heard of them. From Newcastle, you know, uh, Geordie and Wonderland, and uh, all ones like that. Um, mm. No, no one's ever heard of them. You Next. Have. You have? Next. Uh, oh, uh, uh, television. Television. I've just put formaldehyde on my phone. Have you? How's that taste? I could do with a couple of pints of formaldehyde right now, as a matter of fact. Oh, right, OK. I, I'll get to the crunch. What I was going to say to you was, if you thought they were good albums, I was in a dilemma, because I turned on and you did that little skit at the start, and I thought, oh, God, I'm going to have to listen to him now, because I'm, I'm hooked. But I really wanted to listen to uh, those albums. So I was ringing up to say, could you just not be as good for a bit, so I can, you know, try them out? James, you can rely on me. OK, thanks, man. Thanks a lot, James. Ta-da. Bye. <laughs> no one's ever heard of that music. What is that man talking about? Did S Club 7 record those songs? If not, I don't know them. I thought you might have known. I'm hopeless when it comes to naming groups, so... What was the last CD you bought, Luce? Oh, I don't... I don't even know. Huh? Well, well we you download, download them free off the internet, do you? Not free, we pay. Oh, right, of course you do. Mm. <laughs> we do. Do you? Yeah, mugs. <laughs> um, I don't know, actually. It would have been something chronic like the Lighthouse family, something like oh, that, no. but it's simply read something boring like that, like Dido. So, uh, no. I bet it was Dido. No, I haven't got any Dido. Was it Enya? Boring! Certainly not. <laughs> you always assume I go for the worst choice <laughs> Well, ever. I bet I'm right. What was the last CD you bought? I dare you to tell me. I double dare you. Um, probably Amy Winehouse. Yeah, it's probably the last one that oh, I bought. That's a one Amy day. Winehouse. Is um, she dead yet? Because I am so <laughs> sick of reading about her. <laughs> See, whatever I said, and you'd say <laughs> something negative, and then when we went to Kew Summer Swing... We Amy went, Winehouse. Um, I mean, that's, that's the Lighthouse family of this decade. It is so not. Absolutely. That is a terrible thing to well, say. Well, it's, it's a... It's, it's not a, even vaguely similar. It's a no-brainer CD purchase. It's like walking into a shop. People do this. I used to work in a, a <laughs> record shop, and I know this for a fact. People walk in and say, um, can I have the number one? Well, uh, I don't and, do that. And they, they don't know what the number one is, but they just want it, whatever it might be. But, you know, but, but lot, like a lot of people who buy the Lighthouse family and Simply Red and uh, Amy Winehouse albums, people, <laughs> <laughs> people who don't like music. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> come on, that's so mean. What else? Amy Winehouse. <sighs> Buena Vista Social Club. The Buena Vista Social Club. Yeah. Well, actually, we got that after Amy. That's be you. You bought the Buena Vista Social Club after you uh, saw them uh, in concert at Kew no, Gardens. We got it before at we Poshest went. Poshest Kew, did you? Yeah. I bet you've listened to it once because the Buena oh. Vista Social Club is like, oh yeah, this is quite nice. And then the second song is, oh, well, this sort of sounds like the first song. And then the third song is, <laughs> oh cool, is it all like this? <laughs> no, some are a little bit more distinctive than others, but it's quite good kind of music just to have on. Mm, in you the background like... where you can't hear it, yeah. Not so you can't hear it, but it is kind of good <laughs> Just a tinkling music. little wall, like a wallpaper. You know, actually... But see, I like I was right. Like you that. don't like music. You just put it on in the backgrounds just to cover the noise of the, uh, 
of the squeaky springs from the um, lady of the night who lives above you. Lucy, <laughs> Lucy <laughs> used to work in such a lovely place. Oh, it was idyllic. Little bunny rabbits hopping across the grass in front of a white picket fence. And uh, green fields, rolling hills for as far as the eye could see. Now she lives on an inner city sink estate where she's lucky to get back to her flat in one piece without getting shot. There's a slaughterhouse over the road <laughs> and a prostitute living upstairs. How do you like the new flat so far, Luce? I hate it! Ian Lee's good Abbott. Anybody care what this guy thinks? No! Oh, hey, I saw the Simpsons movie. Are they advertising with us? Uh, I don't think so. Was it good? Uh, well, hang on a minute. Burton on Trent. Hello, Aid. Hello, Nick. How you doing? I am super. Thanks for asking. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, um, I'm about the CDs there. That, they've got they've got to be numbered now. The days of the CD, hasn't it? Don't you think? Cause it's, um... Yeah, I would think so. I mean, apart from anything else, they look very unlovely when stacked up. And Lucy will back me up on this. I bet that's the thing that you hate about them the most: how deeply unlovely they look when they're stacked up on a shelf. Luckily, there's none in our in our house to see now. Huh? <laughs> We've got rid of them all. You've got rid of them? <laughs> the CDs, they're all in the loft. They're in the loft? <laughs> yeah. They will never show their faces again. As soon as we buy one, it's downloaded in the loft. Right, so you, you play it on a little... On a computer. Right, on a pewter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because now, um, car stereos have, uh, SD card readers, so you just, you'll just down... I mean, was just got a car recently, you can plug an SD card in. A what card? SD card. SD? You know, like little, um, they're putting cameras and stuff and you use them in, like, uh, recordable digital radios. Oh, it looks like a piece of chewing gum. Like a stick of chewing gum. Like, like a wriggly, you know, juicy fruit. Oh, when was the last time you had a stick of juicy fruit chewing gum? It must be 30 years ago. Why on earth would people want to chew something that tastes like stewed fruit? That's oh, just no really idea. bizarre, isn't it? I mean, there's mint and there's fruit and nothing else. Nothing meat. Why don't they have chocolate flavour? Yeah, why, yeah, why not chocolate? I think there is. You can get chocolate combo ones now. Chocolate oh. condoms? <laughs> <laughs> combo. How do they taste, Luce? <laughs> <laughs> I did not say that. A chocolate combo? What's that? You, yeah, they do sort of chocolate with mint you can get. And I've Ooh. recently had a mint and vanilla. So Chewing when you gum. Bite, yeah, when you bite into it, uh, a vanilla goo comes out in the middle. Ooh, lovely. <laughs> mm. Which brings us back to the... Oh, I better not say it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. It's <laughs> very badly behaved. <laughs> so, Adrian, back to you. Yeah, um, what else was it? Uh, yeah, so, you're just going to plug them in, put that in, you know. You, you stick a, it in it, in it. Yeah, do you, do you have a CD stacker in your car? Yes, I do, yeah. You know, in, what could you go in them about, like, 10, uh, 5, 6, 12? You put it like, the possibilities will be like hours and hours of endless, won't they? Uh, yeah, uh, well, absolutely, yeah. yeah um, what, what was I going to say? Um, you get problems when you park your car with people sticking leaflets on your leaf on your windscreen, or they leave your wiper. Um, not really. Where are you parking your car? Um, well, without mentioning the supermarket, I went. Well, Asda, uh, was it? No, Summerfields, <laughs> Morrison's. Oh, well, you're, you're, you're of course. <laughs> 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 Netto, perhaps? <laughs> no, but I come out of uh, doing the week shopping, and there on the windscreen was. Um, Do you buy any vegetables or fruit, by the way? Um, That's a no, isn't it? I don't use like eating my friends, to be honest. <laughs> oh, these are the jokes, folks. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So it's a no. You don't buy fruit or vegetables. Yes, it's right. an outrage. I, I Raspberry pop tarts. It doesn't count as fruit. That's all I take to work. It's fruit. I don't take sandwiches on anything. I just take bananas, oranges, peaches, pears. That's, he just pictures. named all of the fruits he can think of. <laughs> I don't. I don't eat fruit the rest of the week, so this can't be bothered. But right. <laughs> fruit eats. I do work. Okay, good man. Eat more fruit. Yeah, but these uh, this leaflet. I can't like bear in mind just on the week shopping. And the leaflet was, you know, very mind it's raining as well, I call that a bit paper mashy. And the leaflet was actually for saving 10% off your shopping. Which, <laughs> which is pointless, because I've just done the shopping, you idiots. Was it from the place that you just come out of? Yeah. <laughs> How very annoying. <laughs> Somebody's been sticking them on the windscreen. Well, uh, they want that repeat custom, don't they? Well, they should 
dirt on it. Well, they can't lift from the dry day. Well, if they did it when you went in, then you wouldn't, might not come back. They're trying to tempt you back, Aid. <laughs> just say no. Uh, just say no. Just say, hell no, I won't go. <laughs> Well, you don't have to say, have to say hell, you could just <laughs> be more polite. Aid! Be polite! Oh, I'm always polite, you know, right? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, and we'll politely, uh, go our separate ways. Thanks, Aid. All right, then. Cheers, mate. Ta-ta. Yeah, Here is, uh, Tottenham. Hello, Maureen. Oh, Maureen. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, sorry, Nick. That's all right. Strange, haven't heard from you, Maureen. Well, I don't tend to call out much. <laughs> People no. have to call me. Well, I heard you last week and you was wonderful. Oh. And you're certainly, you're not miserable at all. No, I'm full of it. You've got a wonderful sense of humour. Super, yeah. But you do sound down sometimes, but I don't blame you. Well, you know, it's life, isn't it's it? It's the cards right. that life has dealt me. That's right. Life has changed, everybody's corrupted, it's, it's all money now. Isn't yeah, it? and I haven't got any. I think that's that's the root of my problems. It's yeah. the root of all evil, and it's the root of my problems. Well, well, as long as you're happy. <laughs> stay happy. Yeah, oh, um, H A P P Y. Is everybody happy? I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll try that again. Is everybody happy? No. <laughs> oh, come on! One more time with. All right, yes, Maureen. Well, I wanted to, to talk about this cannabis debate. They keep changing the laws. It's going up. They, they're changing it to um, class C or B, whatever. It's confusing everybody. Yeah, B, C, what is it? Well, I, I mean, I do cannabis. I don't abuse it. I, I put it in my tea, you know, brew the leaves, mix it with some honey. And it's, what's the big deal? It's not making me psychotic at all. It's well, young, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> well, it's them young. Are you being serious? Are you... Sh you make tea with it? Yes, you... Well, they used to... Jazz people used to call it tea, didn't they? Perhaps that's what they were... Oh. Well, we've been doing it for... Maybe that's why tea at the Ritz costs so very much money. <laughs> well, I just wanted to know what you thought, uh, Nick. Um... Well, I'll yeah, take the... Opinion. I'll take the David Cameron route on this one. I think everyone is entitled to have their own opinion and right. keep their uh, personal life for private. Isn't that right. right, David? Yeah. That's right. But I just want you to enjoy your cuppa. I mean, it's good for you. It revitalises my body, what? my mind. Tea? Uh, well, yeah. Because if you, if you, like, smoke it, it makes you dopey. We all know that, don't we? Yeah, well, that's why they call it dope, yeah. I mean, if you, if you, they sell whiskey, that's just, that's 20 times worse than cannabis. It makes you violent, isn't it? Uh, whiskey does, yeah, I've heard that whiskey turns, uh, make you violent. I get violent when people, um... I mean, have you ever heard of anyone, you know, dying on cannabis? Um... You know, they say it makes you psychotic. That's probably one in, um, 5,000. Well, yeah... So, yeah, I've, I've, let's just touch on this briefly. I don't want one more call about cannabis on this show, all right, Luz? Mm. That's a direct uh, instruction to you. That's fine. I'm in agreement. Right. But they seem to be a lot of reports lately about um, cannabis leading to psychosis. Mm -hmm. And that it's the way I'm reading it, it looks like they've mi made their mind up about changing the law back to um, making it a more proscribed drug. Yeah. And they're giving as a publicity blitz to justify that move ahead of time. All of this, you're twice as likely to go nuts, and they never actually tell you the amount of people and what twice as likely means. Because if it's 0.0000001% of the population, twice as likely is, is a similarly minute amount. And I read today that that uh, on the one hand, they're saying that it's, it makes, you know, smoking dope makes it much more likely that you'll go mad. Mm. The amount of people who uh, smoke uh, dope in ever greater quantities and ever stronger um, uh, product mm. has increased dramatically over the last 10, 20 years. The amount of people who are going schizophrenic, on the other hand, has remained exactly the same. So the two uh, uh, statistics don't match, do they? I just thought that that was an interesting point. Aha, yes. Yes, I thought. Very. Anyway, Maureen, it's been a delight... And, well, God um, bless you. And, um, and may you... 
I can't. No, no, you, I'm still surprised at what you initially said, to the point that I am almost what? speechless. Hello, Nick? Yes, Maureen. Oh, I thought what I was cut off there. No, just to let you know, it's, then it, you've got lots of stronger stuff now. Yeah. Um, it's them crazy scientists. Right. You know, they've, they've made it 20 times stronger. Yeah. Okay. But I just let to, like to let you know I don't abuse it at all. All right, good for and you, Maureen. Be a sex life, Nicky. <laughs> okay. Just when I thought it couldn't get worse, it got worse. Well, let's get back to it. We have a how low auction running at the moment. I particularly like these because it means that you can get a super prize, and this really is a good one, for literally one penny. Mm. Has anybody actually bid and won with one penny yet? I don't know, actually. I recommend bidding six pence. You often have said six. Well, I know. It's just that I saw... Uh, I filled in a form on a plane once, mm. and now I'm just get, I get a blizzard of, of, of auctions through my email thing. They just never stop. Regardless of the, the, of the fact that, I've, that I, just, I never go for them, because they're always, would you like a two-week holiday on an elephant? in Nepal? And the answer's always no, not really, no. <laughs> I don't care how much it costs, I won't go. Um, but um, often when you read the, the results, it will be six, or sixty-six, or six-six-six. Six, six. I, mean, I think people have a, a fear of the number six, so few people... Um, having said that, uh, however, now everyone will vote six, and it's probably not the number to go for. I've heard that fives and zeros are often more popular. Really? Yeah, apparently. Because people would, because five is, a, is half of ten, so people would automatically go for that, and zero is a nice round number, and so they would well, think that nobody else would get it. Yeah, or the, or I think you would think that everybody would go for a five and a zero, yeah. so you therefore would go for something in between, when right. in actual fact. So it's just one of those things, I mean, you can really think this through, or you can uh, make the, the, the most daft um, bid, and it could be the winner. Which uh, increases the uh, the fun of it, right? Yeah. And this one, have you ever? Uh, do you use a um, Apple? No, I don't. I no. bought an Apple once. Uh, it was the, the one with a screen and the and the handle and the half globe base. Do you yeah. remember that beautiful yeah. looking thing? Up to that point, I'd never used uh, an Apple. I'd always been um, a Windows person. Oh. And uh, it just looked so utterly lovely. And uh, when it c came out, it was a big publicity blitz, and you couldn't get it, you couldn't get it, you couldn't get it. And then the day it got released, there was I was in Edinburgh at the time, and there, I think there was one in the whole town. And I managed to track it down, I went down to the shop, and I got it in this giant box, and I took it home, and I got the uh, thing out, and it wasn't loaded with its thing. And so I thought, oh, right, got to do it yourself, have you? So I got out five CDs and spent the next few hours loading it all in, and look, wow, it looks so great. And then I switched it on, and I thought, this mouse hasn't got any buttons on it. How do you work this, then? And I thought, oh, I've got no idea what that... And I called a mate and said, oh, well, yeah, you, it'll take you about a month, two, three months, maybe, to get as proficient on it as you are on uh, Windows. You know, just go to the class. Just, you know, sign up for a class. And I thought, screw that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting it back in its box and taking it straight back to the shop, uh, which I did. I said, I don't know how this works. Can I have my money back, please? Oh, after all that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was the same day. So I, I owned... Uh, it was the loveliest computer I ever owned until I switched it on and I've got no idea how to work it. But then that's, that's just my um, ignorance and stupidity. Nothing to do with the machine, of course. It's all me. I didn't my know fault. They were different. That's oh, it. completely asked me. Well, you know, uh, my, my mouse at home has got five buttons on it. It's got Is left, it? right, forward, back, up and down, and to and fro. For all the games you play. Uh, well, just, you know, <laughs> you, you can uh, make each button do a different thing. Gosh, that's cool. Uh, but uh, Apple, they, they don't have no. There's just one, right? I, I, wouldn't, I have no idea even where to start. Um, having explained all of that important information to you, I have now run out of time to do <laughs> the contest. <laughs> I will do it in the next hour, I promise. It's uh, running until Sunday at 2 o'clock. The, uh, the lot is for an Apple Mac book. It's like a laptop. It's all white, lovely and uh, well made and so on. And an iPod Nano. What about that for a prize? I see you shiver with Anne Tissy. Back in the studio, making a picture again. <laughs> Name that movie. I bet you can't. I can't. 
Oh, go on, have a go. I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio, making a picture again. Making a picture again. Um, Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz? No, you fail this test. <laughs> That's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I saw the Simpsons movie. Oh, yes. I'll ask you again. Are they advertising with us? Um, not as far as I know. <laughs> I think no. You know those, um... You watch The Simpsons, right? Yeah, every now and again. OK. Because my husband does. Hey! It takes up all the recording space of our system that we've got at home. So we have, like, 80 well, hours of recording. What are you recording, recording it in? HD? Uh, no, not in HD, but every one, every day at 6 o'clock is recorded. So, every week I have to delete hours upon hours of the system. Well, are you watching it on, uh, Sky? Because they seem to be showing the same ones over and 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 I'm saying it like that to indicate how repetitive it is that they're showing the same ones over and over and over and over and over again. But do they still make you laugh? Um, well, I'm like you. I've got so much TV backed up that I have to just delete things without watching them now. Yeah, In order to get space for things that I'm also going to delete without watching. Mm. But, you know, life moves on and there isn't enough hours in the day to watch all the TV uh, that uh, you're supposed to. Yeah, well, we've actually got a recordable DVD to put all of our sort of stuff onto oh, it. Well, get you and your fancy but, recordable DVD. Well, all very well, but in actual fact, you never end up doing it because you just think, oh, can you be bothered to no. record it all? Yeah. Because no, it'll come around again. Oh, there's a couple of exciting uh, uh, series that um, started uh, this last week. I wonder if you caught them. Heroes which the first two episodes were very, very good indeed. No. Um, I'm hoping that it's not like Lost, because Lost started uh, great as well, and then went downhill really rapidly, and then um, I just clung on until the uh, end of the first series, thinking, oh, it's bound to get better eventually, plus there, wasn't, there was no other hour-long dramas. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's no hour-long dramas that this country produces at all. TV in here in America has changed over the past uh, a decade or so. I mean, it used to be that any anything that came from America was rubbish, was absolute, lowest common denominator, tripe. And that British television was the best in the world. I'm, I should get Rule Britannia on one of these um, keyboards. You should. Fact, <laughs> note that down. I've got to get that. I'm going to write okay. it on the back of my hand. Rule Britannia. Or Jerusalem. Um, I think I'd prefer a bit of Jerusalem. Right, well, I'll get both. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mix and match. <laughs> and, um, yes, British television used to be the envy of the world. Now it's completely the other way around. Everything that's good on TV is American. Anything that's funny is almost certainly American, like The Simpsons and Larry Sanders. I know that's ten years old now, but... Uh, um, and, and all the uh, soaps that are, that are old and just keep uh, playing over and over again. Mm. You know, th those are the only guaranteed uh, laughs on TV. I mean, if you want something that's right bang up to date and that is also uh, quite caustic and current... Then the um, the uh, the Daily Show with John Stewart, which is on More Four, I think, is uh, is quite the best talk show on television, bar none. It's excellent. Uh, it's on there every day for half an hour. Mm. Um, and uh, Americans now produce all of the best dramas, without exception. You got uh, Twenty Four, The Sopranos, uh, C I S, whatever they call it. What do they call it? C N I S or C S I. C S I is the right answer. <coughs> James, by the way, is filling in for Alex, who's thrown a sickie, <coughs> pretending to be <laughs> ill at home. He's put his back out. Yeah, sure he has. Mm. Doing his car. Yeah, something like that. Mm. He's changing his steering wheel for a chrome one. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> 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 he was sticking a rub a rudder on the back of his giant chrome <laughs> boat. <laughs> <laughs> and they needed a new uh, <laughs> ship's wheel. <laughs> um, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, um, CIS. What do they call CSI. it? CSI. CSI. Uh, the Sopranos, 24. Now, we've got Heroes, which started uh, last week. I mean, people like Lost. I think it's trite now, but uh, people uh, like it. And there's... Um, uh, oh, blimey, there's no end of things. The, the Studio 60, which started last week, that's excellent. And what have we got in this country? What do we actually produce on TV now? Dance X. 
dance, uh, celebrity, uh, pop idol, it's just all that. It's just crap now that we produce, well, isn't it? If you want crap, come to this country because we've got a lot of it. Have you watched Wire in the Blood? We'll squeeze it through your cable. Pardon? Wire in the Blood. What's that then? Robson Green. Very, oh, very good. Oh, good. Robson Green. It's really, really oh. good. Oh. He's a crime psychologist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a crime great. psychologist that uh, that you really fancy. No, no, no. I don't. It's like a modern cracker, I suppose. Well, I didn't like cracker either. Well, I think this is better. Really? Yeah, I do. I think you should give it a go. And there was another one I watched this week, but I can't remember the name of it. But it, I really like kind of crime ones, thrillery type crime ones. Yeah, you're beginning to one. scare me now, Lose. <laughs> what, what is it with this bloodlust and you? I couldn't watch a horror ever, but I love kind of crime thriller TV programmes. I don't know why. They don't frighten me at all. A bit of gore. Well, like Prime Suspect. Oh, you know, oh, I take some of it that, back. Yeah. Not all. Some. Prime yeah, Suspect. Without great. question. The best thing that's been on TV... Well, among the best things that's been on TV so far this year. Well, then you'd like Wire in the Blood. All right, then. Give it a go. Oh, all right, then. It's better than me telling you to give Big Brother a go, isn't oh, well, it? Oh, I'm not going to do it. No. Well... I almost, no almost it. got interested the other day. Why? Well... Even the bookies aren't interested anymore. Aren't they? No. <laughs> Apparently not. It's been on the news all day today. Huh? When does that mess finish, by the way? I've no idea. It's supposed to be the Christmas. longest... Christmas. The shouty one just got <laughs> booted out. That's all I know. Yeah, the, Charlie. That, that, that woman with the worst personality of anyone I've ever seen on television. Good grief. I heard Somebody... she was argumentative. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or is that an understatement? <laughs> it's one of those people, and this, and I, I'm not going to talk about Big Brother either. I don't no. want one single call about either Big Brother or Dope on the rest of this show, or in fact ever, for the rest of my life, okay? Those are my explicit instructions to you. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I can't Even remember. If it what really I was... helps your sex life. No, I can't remember <laughs> what I was going to say now. Uh, you were talking about Prime Suspect being really, yeah. really good. No, then we got the Big Brother. Big Brother, yeah. and also you were saying that there's no decent British TV programs. But you have watched The Simpsons, which we still haven't really had your. Review oh right, of. The Simpsons. Well, you know, you know, sometimes you watch The Simpsons and you think there's so many jokes coming at me that mm. and they're it's such multi-layered that you're going to have to watch it again just to catch all the jokes that are in the background and so on and and you know when when you see something that's that's so hysterically funny that you have to s just relax your face every night like concentrate on just relaxing your face because y your face is really getting tight and, mm. and after a while it just becomes painful <laughs> well the simpsons isn't like that at all oh you had to try and lift your cheeks to make them ache. Well, the place that we saw it was fantastic. It's in the basement of a, a, a hotel in Soho called the Soho Hotel. Ah. That's a little too many hoes for that area of town, I think. <laughs> I mean, if I was going to spend £100 million on a business, I think I'd want a few fewer hoes in the title of my business. Mm. Was it a funky little... I also wouldn't call private. it my business, either. Not in that area of town, anyway. But you go into the basement, oh, it's fantastic. And they serve you, uh, because it was, you know, courtesy of Fox. Oh, lovely. And they serve you, uh, uh and munchies before you go in. Oh, oh we had chorizo and uh, prawns nice on a munchies. stick. Oh, it was lovely, loose. Oh, I feel a bit bad. I was actually invited to go. Really? That's nice. But, but we're my... talking about me. <laughs> but my hubby <laughs> wanted to go, and I never told him we were invited. Oh, you were invited to that? Yeah. Oh. Oh, it, the, and yeah. the food was, oh, it, so it? yummy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a nice glass of fizz? Yes, well, and, and, the, and the booze was free. Very nice. And so you go into the cinema, nicest cinema I've ever been in in my life. They had uh, so leather sofas and armchairs and uh, li little um, uh, trays on the side of, uh, of your chair on a little sort of movable stick where you could put your nice glass of Chardonnay. Booze. And, um, <laughs> and we all settled, settled back in the exquisite comfort of this, um, you know, highly, it was highly raked so you couldn't see the person in front of you, just had an excellent view of the screen and everything was wonderful. And then the film started. Oh, no. I, it was a, a full cinema. And we went through 80 minutes, I would say, people were laughing for, during those 80 minutes for about 20 seconds. Seriously? It Everyone? It was awful. Mm. Probably the least funny, funny film I've ever seen. I, words cannot describe how bad it is. The Sun, <laughs> the Sun, whose parent company is um, News International, mm. who owned the studio that makes... Simpsons, 
The Sun, in their movie uh, critique, gave it, out of five, five. And Coincidence, e I'm yeah, sure. And mm -hmm. even they said that the, that the people in front of them weren't laughing. Oh Watching this fantastic movie is a completely different experience to just seeing three Simpson TV episodes back to back, said the Sun. Yeah, you're right. If you saw three Simpsons episodes back to back, then the chances are it would be funny. This just isn't. It's it was quite shockingly bad. And the amount people of trying to laugh because yeah. I find you want because if you like the program normally, you want to find it yes. funny. Now. It's, Plus, we'd been, uh, a lot had been invested in us, and we, we wouldn't have come off the street. We'd been given goodie bags, and we'd been given lovely food, and free booze, and this lovely place to see it in, so we were all feeling very positive about the experience. Mm. And even with uh, a crowd that had been jimmied along, it, there's still no laughs to be found. I, I would say there was three jokes that worthy of laughing out loud, Mm. Not a lot, mine. I mean, I wasn't falling off my seat on any of them. But uh, to make a noise when you're laughing, was it three loud? times in eighty minutes? Oh dear, terrible. So the review from Nick Abbott, rubbish. Yeah, out of five, I'll give it a. <laughs> you're wondering what it's all about, and I can't tell you because I don't know myself. You know, it does. I'm not going to go on and on and on about it, but I feel that it's as though I, I owe it to my, I owe it to my vast listening audience to steer them away from this. It's going to cost you a fortune to go to the movies these days, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, loads and loads, especially if you take, you know, your whole family. It costs you, well, if you go to the West End, it costs you 100 quid. I hardly ever go to the cinema these days. Yeah. Do you go, do you go very often? Well, now I subscribe paying? to um, film channels. Yeah. I feel obliged to wait until it comes around exactly. for free. Yeah. yeah, well, not free, but, you know, I've paid for it already. And also, in our own homes now, we can have such a good sound and yeah. vision mm. system. Even on your microscopic television. <laughs> yeah, even on my <laughs> tiny set. Yeah. But it's How big is it? Ten inches. It's 26 inches. Yeah. Vertical, that is, isn't it? Diagonal. Diagonal, rather. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Um, yeah, I think it's quite big. Oh, yeah, that's huge. Plenty mm. big enough yeah. for us. Don't need anything bigger, it would take up the whole room. Yeah, you just need a telescope to see it. <laughs> you are cruel. <laughs> <laughs> There's instruments at Jodrell Bank that they uh, used to scour the heavens that couldn't detect the picture on a 26-inch TV. Well, it's a lot bigger than what we had. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel very lucky. Yes. <laughs> anyway. So the Simpsons. Oh, I thought you were halfway through to uh, saying something. Uh, I don't know what was I saying. But uh, oh, the yes, amount the sound of sound and vision is just yeah. so good these mm. days. Yeah, plus you don't get you a lot of irritating to... people munching their way through popcorn like, uh, yeah. like a grazing cow. And you can pause it if you need to go off for a little tinkle. Yeah, and in exciting moments, people don't start shooting at the screen. Yeah. I think it's great. <laughs> 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 they Passing do that in America. They'll, they'll be doing that here soon as well. What happens in America, if it's bad, happens here five or ten years later. Everything. You name it, it's happened here. The um, uh, obesity thing, the crack, um, the guns, everything that happens that's bad in America will shortly be happening here too. It's guaranteed. Mm. Um, but yeah, the amount of times that I've, I've read interviews with Matt Groening, 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 I think is the operative yeah. word in this respect. He said, "Oh, you know, we checked our jokes. Uh, normally in the Simpsons, we check our jokes a hundred times, and if they're still funny after a hundred times, then we'll put them in the show." And he said, "But this time, oh, it's much more stringent. We checked our jokes four hundred times, and if after four hundred times we thought, well, then we'd whip it out and we put a brand new extra." special joke in. They, they were absolute rubbish. The weird thing was that it wasn't like The Simpsons at all. It was as though they tried to make a film mm. that happened to star The Simpsons. It wasn't right. It wasn't like The Simpsons. It was a movie starring The Simpsons. So they just tried a little bit too hard, maybe. It was Well, they, they didn't try hard enough. They said that they'd been writing this thing for, what, ten years or something? Mm. It looked to me like they'd written it in a weekend. It maybe really was terrible. Maybe they over with it, though. Huh? And maybe they over tinkered with it, and so... Just squeeze the funny out. I guess, maybe. Because what might have sounded funny initially probably was funny, and when they'd heard it so many times, they thought, oh, no, it doesn't, we'll stick another joke in. I'm just amazed that, that, that it got past so many people and then got released, that so many people saw it with so much money at stake and, th and thought, right, yeah, that's good, we'll go with that. Because it's not just people who make it, is it? It's got to go through executives and the head studio heads and 
and so on, and PR companies, and there's a blizzard of people, thousands mm. and thousands of people, who will give it the thumbs up and the OK. Maybe just nobody had the nerve to say to Matt Groening, this isn't funny, mate. But maybe if they knew that people would go and watch it anyway... Right. Then, Why bother? Yeah, yeah. Maybe it doesn't matter. Well, isn't that terrible? I mean, the South Park people, mm. they bothered. Now, whether or not you like South Park and think it's uh, juvenile, um, I have this right up my alley. That's my, you know, fart noises and burps. <laughs> it's nothing funnier, right? But, you know, on the other hand, The Simpsons put a, a loud wet burp noise in virtually every single episode. Not because it uh, advances the story any, but it's just it's funny hearing people burp, right? <laughs> Um, so the uh, the level of humour is more or less the same, it's just the South, the South Park uh, takes it one louder, they just turn it up to 11. And both of their films are funnier in five minutes than the entire Simpsons movie was uh, over 80. So, um, I don't know, something's gone horribly wrong there. Mm. But for the son to give it five stars out of five, I mean, oh, that's just laughable. Of course, it's not Johnny Vaughan that's doing that anymore, it's someone who is nameless. Oh. So it could be anybody. Yeah, I think the Johnny Vaughan's not doing it f for, I don't know, was it money-saving reasons or something like that, I don't know. But uh, whoever's doing the, uh, the the things now is nameless. Uh, Rupert Murdoch probably wrote it. Five out of five. I don't think so. Here is Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello, Sean. Nick. Sean. Hey, how are you? Good, thanks. You're being too rough on British television. Really? Yeah, I think so. What's great? What about British television? Yeah. I don't know, you've got uh, shows like, now I haven't been there in about six months, but you have Shameless. Have you ever seen Shameless? Yeah, Shameless was great for the first two series, and then it went downhill really quickly when that Nightmare family moved in and took over, whatever they were called. That's a, I mean, that's a great original program. You had The Office when it first started. Yeah, which was good for 12 episodes, count them, 12. A Alan Partridge. Yeah, I'm, I don't really have much knowledge of Alan Partridge. You, you don't? You haven't watched Alan Partridge? Uh, I know what it is, but I haven't actually sat down and watched a lot of it, no. You have to watch really? Partridge. You, you have to. Okay, then. <laughs> That's another one you've got to watch. <laughs> oh, all right. It's hilarious. But the thing that you get from America that you just don't get in, in this country are long series of dramas that you can really get into, things that last a half a year. But e even the dramas are co comedies, though. I mean, if you really sit down and watch it with any any sort of reality envisioned beforehand, it, it's just not happening. CSI in Miami you were talking about. Well, you know, if you put reality on television, then you get <laughs> Big Brother. <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's garbage, I have to Yes. Say. But that's British, you know. Well, it's, it's, it comes from Holland uh, via us to the rest of the world. We disseminate tripe on a worldwide scale. All of those shows that are number one in America now, that, uh, you know, you've got American Idol and American Celebrity Idol and Celebrity American Dancing and Celebrity Children Dancing oh. in America and all of that crap, that's all us, that is. Yeah, that's just garbage television. Yeah. It's number one. It, well, I mean, I, I, I reside in the UK. I work over here, but I reside in the UK for the most part. But the way they advertise American television over there really isn't, it, it's not the case. It, it's not number one. People people just switch the channel. They just say that so so everybody watches it. Well, I think they have to have some sort of um, quality control about how you no. judge ratings, because that's what people live and die on it, isn't it? It's, it's just it's all lies, believe me. Oh, well, I'll, I'll just add it to all of the other lies that we've been told <laughs> on a daily basis. So you work here and you live there. That's a bit no, weird. What I, do you do? I work in Vegas, but I live in the UK. So my family's in the UK. Right. So you're uh, well, a hitman for one of the casinos. Gay computer stuff for the uh, for about the casinos. Right. Have you ever um, put anybody in the boot of a car and driven them out of the <laughs> desert? <laughs> no, I can't say that I have. I think they've done that on uh, CSI though. Yeah. Well, I'll take that as a yes. Yeah. No, I, it's I, I, years since. Oh, what's that? Out to news. Apparently, The Simpsons. Uh, out to news at twenty nine fifteen. Um. Yeah. Uh. Years since I've been to um, Las Vegas. It's been years? When, when was the last time you were out here? It was before it went family, before they started um, sinking ships for uh, you know, the amusement yeah. of kiddies and, uh, and, and built. Um, they're getting away from that now. Are they? Yeah, they've, they've, they're, they're getting more adult-oriented. 
Thank right. You. I think they, they, they spent hundreds, well, billions of pounds on making it a, a family destination, and they realised that, actually, <laughs> Las Vegas is no place for kids. Yeah, they, they change they change it uh, every five years or so. Yeah, Disneyland is a place to take children because there's few, fewer hookers. I think so. Yeah. They but uh, it must be a very exciting place. No, not really. No, it's like uh, I said, probably not very exciting living there. No. <laughs> Uh, to tell you the truth, I, I enjoy the UK a lot better than Las Vegas. Yeah. From, well, uh, we, from, from what I hear from the weather. We've got culture and history. I mean, m uh, mind you, well, we've got um, seasons, uh, but I think that uh, almost everybody in this country would give up the seasons for a little while just for a bit of that Las Vegas heat. Yeah, maybe two weeks or so, but uh, living in the middle of a desert and neon 24-7 gets old rather quickly. Well, I'd, I think two weeks would be a bit too quick. I think we could cope with it for about six months. What do you think, Luz? Six months. Maybe three months. I'd be happy with that. Yeah. Majority Something like that. Summer. 100 degrees during the day, 78, 80 degrees at night. I could cope with that. What, for, forever, really? In fact, you know what, Sean? Let's do a house swap. You, you can come and stay at mine, and I'll go and live at yours. All right. It's a deal. All right. Thanks a lot, Sean. All right. Thanks. Cheers. Ta-da. I am so popular in uh, Las Vegas. No one in the London's listening, but uh, in Nevada. Oh, through the roof. Uh, 2915. Everything I said about The Simpsons, by the way, is completely incorrect. I've just been told. Here is uh, Darren on Tracy Island. <laughs> you need to get out more, Nick, and see the film with normal people. What, instead of, um, instead of media spoiled, people? Spoiled media people. Yeah. get too much drink and then forget that things are funny. Five stars from the Telegraph, four out of five from the Guardian, five from the Sun, four out of five from the Times, so on and so on. Well, I tell you what, they must have seen a different yeah. film, because it wasn't just me, the entire well, cinema was, was in silence. The audience I saw it with just a couple of hours ago were crying with laughter. You liar. I'm not. The kids were f hysterical with all the slapstick. The scene when Homer's going through the snow arguing with himself, I thought was one of the funniest moments The Simpsons has done. The Disney scene? Snow? I don't remember snow. Exactly. How drunk were you? <laughs> Go and see it again. I really, really enjoyed it. The opening sequence with the 20th Century Fox logo and Ralph. I don't want to give too much away. Doing this, the sound of the music. Oh, come on. That wasn't funny. Hey, what? The pig section? That wasn't funny either. What kind of, um... Uh... Turning into grumpy old Nick. Yeah. Nothing's funny anymore. Nothing's good anymore. Darren, have you been smoking crack? You're moaning about everything. <laughs> it's not as good as it used to be in the old days. Yeah, you know? well, that's true enough. When yeah, the yeah. trams were going down Oxford Street. Yeah, you make a good point. And they, and they, there were pea soupers. Oh, pea soupers. I could go a couple of pints of pea soup right and now, Luz. What do you take think? Take your ration book out to get your half an ounce of bacon once a week. <laughs> Darren, I will not be persuaded otherwise. It was not funny, unless they're advertising with us, in which case it was among the well, most hilarious 80 minutes I've ever spent. Maybe you should listen to the radio station you work for, then. Yeah, I absolutely... I, I never turn it off. What are you talking about? Anyway, Darren, I've got to go, because the new news is upon us, and it'll be all bad, I betcha. Abbott. Everything is going extremely well. Hey, you know, a little while ago, I was uh, mentioning about how much the Olympics were going to cost. You know, initially we were told it's going to be three billion. Yeah. And at that point, I said... Eleven. No. Oh. How much did I say? I thought you did. Thinking. Think, Lucy. Nine. Think. Ooh. <laughs> think. <laughs> you got... What, was it more? Ooh, 12? Like I'm, 12 is exactly right. Yeah, I told you to write it down. This is very I important. I thought that you'd said 11 and I'd said 12 originally. No, 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 no. <laughs> Shall I, I said 12. Initially we were told 3 billion. Mm. You know, when everyone was jumping up and down, hooray, we've won the Olympics, hooray, everyone was thrilled. And I was sitting at home going, oh, no, you know what this means. <laughs> and I've explained over and over again what it means, and everyone was poo-pooing me. They were poo-pooing me, Luz. Poo-pooing. Yes. It's a good word. 3 billion, they said it was going to cost, and we were going to get all of these exciting new venues, which will be uh, used 24 hours a day for no end of, ex you know, <laughs> tremendous... Um, I can't finish that sentence. No end of tremendous... Car boot sales. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, athletic events and such. Yeah. And I said, oh, no, it wasn't. 
You know, like our previous caller just said. Moan, moan, moan. Stop whining. <laughs> um, I said it would cost 12 billion, which was four times the amount which we originally promised. And all of the uh, venues are going to be mothballed. They're going to have great giant padlocks put on them, and uh, security will have to patrol them 24 hours a day so that kids in hoodies and caps... Hoodies and caps. How cold are their heads? <laughs> <laughs> Two hats. Um, so that they don't, uh, you know, urinate on them and pour bleach in them and set fire to them and, you know, all the other uh, stuff that kids enjoy. Uh, it's okay, there's a little catch days. you can check on top of the water to make sure that no one has urinated in them, apparently. Really? I saw that today. A little, a little tiny tag. Well, that doesn't stop people doing it, though, does it? <laughs> well, no. It just stops you... Drinking it. Yeah. Mm. It doesn't actually stop you drinking it, because who checks the tag? You just put your bottle under the, uh, under the tap. What if you bought that, if you got that water... And have your fill and then boiled it up. Would it be all right then, if it's had a bit of urine I in don't it? know. That's irrelevant. Someone's peed in it. And you know what? The, w what I think about that is, uh, I'll go back to the, uh, I'll come back to the Olympics in a second, and you just swerved Sorry. me onto something else now. <laughs> I'll go back to the boat analogy. We're all in a boat. This mm. society is a small boat. Let's ex uh, uh, go down to a hundred people and extrapolate out from the hundred to society at large. Okay, so there's a hundred of us and we're all rowing uh, together for the uh, horizon where uh, nirvana awaits there'll be uh, you know juicy plums on trees and uh, and cows with names that we can slaughter loose <laughs> mm. um and 10 people at the back of the boat they're not helping and five people are not only not helping they're actually they're, they're peeing in our water supplies what do you think that the hundred people on the boat would do to the people who were peeing in your water supply? No oh. other water being... A, we would beat them to a pulp and we'd throw their bloody corpses over the side, correct? Yeah. Yeah. We might eat they'd, them They'd first. had their chance and they blew it, right? Mm hmm What's going to happen to these kids when they're found? Absolutely nothing. You know, it's like training animals. I'm sorry, but if you act like an animal, then you have to be treated like one. If the punishment does not fit the crime, if it's not appropriate to the crime, if it comes much later and it bears no relevance to what you've actually done, mm. then it's going to do no good. If you tap somebody lightly on the back of the hand and ask them very nice if they wouldn't mind not doing it again, and here's an iPod and a free holiday in Spain, for, uh, in, the, in the hope that you won't sue us for uh, restricting your freedom to express yourself, that's not going to do any good, is it? No. A short, sharp, like Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, a short, sharp shot, and they don't do it again. I mean, good manners don't cost nothing, do they? What about if you made them drink their own business? That would teach them a lesson. They wouldn't do that again, would they? Well, see, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Back to the old school. Yeah. A clip around, a metaphorical clip around the ear. And a little smack, yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Just to finish it off. Yes. <laughs> Drink that. Because, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, can you imagine if a, if the uh, a community mm. does actually rely on water for a long period of time and people are out there with their uh, jugs and they belatedly find that uh, some kids in the area had peed in it. I mean, if people got hold of those kids, they're dead kids, right? But I don't understand the puerile mind of wanting to do that. It's the parents to... Um, to um, uh, which, misquote um, Bill Clinton, it's the parents, it stupid. I mean, like, why, why would you think to do that? When because you, they, cause they would need to drink it themselves, wouldn't they? Well, they hadn't thought that through because they're morons. But they, they do it because no one has ever said no to them. Hmm. Their parents, who, and who, are, you know, are, uh, along with. Uh, what seems to be the, uh, the the common theme with parenting this d these days, are unfamiliar with the word no. Mm. They don't want to restrict their little boobykins' freedom. Mm. And so they just give them whatever they blummin' well like in lieu of actual attention. They give them a TV in their room and a PlayStation and they can let them go out till four o'clock in the morning and they're boozing and smoking mm. and, and they never hear the word no. Yeah. True. You know, in other countries, we sit down, uh, or they sit down with their uh, family, and they get a bit of adult uh, supervision, attention, and instruction. In this country, well, they're left roaming like yeah. uh, like a pack of wild dogs. That's the problem, boys and girls, mums and dads. It's the parenting. I think, as well, parents like to now treat children as if they're little adults. Correct. And I don't understand that, because I don't actually think that you're 
helping a child's life by making them have to mature quicker. Yes. It just seems pointless to me. Like, they, children should be allowed to be children and have fun as children. And be disciplined as children. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, be a little bit frightened of adults. Correct. As yeah. opposed to what we have now, where they know for a fact that they can do anything they like and get away with it. Mm. Because we're so obsessed with, uh, with everyone's... Um, uh, human rights. Yeah, it's but, just ludicrous. As children, if we ever even gave a bit of back chat, you'd be frightened to do it. Yeah, of course. Because of the consequences. That's right. But there are no consequences anymore. The mm. consequences used to be, if you uh, misbehaved at school, you'd be up in front of the headmaster, as I was, they put, the, you'd have to hold your hands out, one on top of the other, they put a Bible over your wrists so that they wouldn't cut your wrists open, and they'd they'd whack your hands with a leather belt that's about three foot long and split up the middle so that it comes apart in the air and together on your hands, making it the most painful thing you've ever experienced in your life. Yeah. And you'd stand there and take it. But the difference being is that your parents would support that action. Yes, as opposed to suing the school yeah. for disabusing you. But I don't know if I would want that to happen again, though. To Absolutely, that degree. yeah, you, why not? Would you actually bring back the cane? I'd bring back the cane and the village stocks and, um... <laughs> yeah, the stocks. <laughs> yeah, I'm in, fact, with that. in fact, there should be a boat in the centre of every town for the keel hauling. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do I'll buy the, the rope, let's get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not extreme at all. <laughs> I think there's nothing wrong with a bit of discipline, but... I, um, I don't know if we could go back to teachers smacking our children. Well, no one smacks our children anymore. I mean, asking no. children who have the minds of wild animals if they wouldn't mind not doing it again, mm. I mean, they're laughing at that. So what, what well, punishment they should, will they have? Well, they should have a different form of punishment. I mean, even if that's it, you've got to stay at school for hours upon end and the you can't nonsense. go Well, home. that's just internment. I mean, they're, but, they're misbehaving because they're... They're either too stupid to, to keep up with a class, so they don't have any idea what's going on in the classroom, and their minds are wandering, and they can't be bothered anymore, and so they just start causing trouble, which brings a halt to the proceedings, so that everyone in the class yeah. suffers. That's, that's part of that, uh, we don't want to discriminate against stupid people, so everyone has to be taught in the same class. Another moronic idea from our, uh, uh, you know, masters and uh, betters. Oh, boy, we really are getting through the stuff tonight, we aren't are, we? We are, aren't we? Should, yeah. Do you want to go back to the Olympics? Oh, well, actually, we still haven't finished your little chat about that, um, nice TV. Huh? And sound system. What's that? That man? you can bid for. Oh! For pennies. The good news! Yeah, see? That's some nice stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, we, uh, it's very nice, actually. We've got a special Apple, uh, MacBook. MacBook? MacBook. I don't... MacBook. Apple MacBook. <laughs> sounds, <laughs> sounds like that's from a different company. <laughs> App Apple MacBook. He was uh, one of those uh, men who uh, led the Scottish in the revolt against the English. Apple MacBook. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and an iPod Nanu Nanu. Uh, it's up for grabs in our How Low Reverse auction. The uh, competition is open from now until Sunday. It's the person with the lowest unique bid that what wins the game. And that's the lowest bid in pence that nobody else makes before the end of the auction, which will be 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Uh, this, uh, super prize, uh, well, it's not prize, really, it's a lot, right? I keep mm. saying prize, it's not a prize at all, it's a lot. This, uh, fantastic lot has got a lot in it. In it includes a front row facility that lets you show off your favourite music, movies and photos from across the room. Huh? Um. What's that, then? Well, maybe you can pop your photos on it. Oh. Um. Uh, it features a 13-inch screen, which is much bigger than the TV that Lucy just bought. 13? 13. An Intel Core 2 Duo processor. Bing bong, bing bong. <laughs> 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 I think it's the law that you have to do that, don't you? <laughs> Every time you say Intel, bing bong, bing bong. <laughs> just don't say it again. Uh, and uh, it's got an 80 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, it connects wirelessly to an existing wireless internet connection using Wi-Fi. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> the iPod Nanu Nanu can store up to a thousand songs. How does it do that, then? And my dad can't get his head around that at all. He says, what's this Walkman thing? This, um, uh, iPod, what's that? I said, you know the CD player that you carry around with you, that you put a CD in and it plays? Mm. Yeah, the wireless, he says, yes. <laughs> Everything that's electrical is the wireless. I said, well, it can store, it can have... Um, a thousand 
albums inside it. And then his eyes just sort of glass over. He's got no <laughs> idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds pointless. <laughs> yeah. uh, to bid, text LBC plus your bid in pence to 88821. For example, if you were to bid uh, £2.50, it would be LBC 2502. Treble eight two one. Bids cost one pound fifty plus your standard network rate. Lines close two p.m. Sunday afternoon. That's the 29th of July. Bidders must be over sixteen. See lbc.co.uk for full terms and conditions. Did I say it right? Yeah. I'm listening, dear. You can talk to me. Um, the uh, Olympics is what I was uh, talking about earlier on. And uh, shall I take this call first, and then we'll get into uh, how right I always am. Okay. It's a burden, actually, being correct about everything all the time. Here is Crystal Palace. Hello, Mick. Hello, Nick. Uh, I've got a question for you. Yes, Mickey. Um, uh, yeah, quick, uh, well, I say quick, but two things, actually, Nick. Go on. I'm composing myself here. That, that American guy it sounded like a Phil Henry character. Uh, I'm, well... <laughs> Phil Henry's got so many voices that essentially everyone sounds like a Phil Henry character. Phil Henry, by the way, one of the greatest talents in the history of radio. Google him. H-E-N-D-R-I-E. -E. Yeah. Um, uh, and have you uh, ever been to Newcastle? And if so, what did you think? Um, I don't know whether I can say that I've been to it. I've been through it. You know when the train goes over the bridge? <laughs> And uh, you look over on the uh, right and you see down the valley, whatever that's called, the Valley of Newcastle. Yeah. It's like the Valley of Death. And the sun is glinting and it's all sort of new, it's brown, like a nuky brown. And it looked so very romantic. At least it did, uh, you know, when you're going by at 50 miles an hour. Right. It, it, right, the blur would look quite romantic. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it's a lovely okay. little valley. Alright, because uh, I'm using it as a staging post to go up to Edinburgh. Ah, oh, yes. For the old fringe. As uh, a staging post? Where are you going from? Well, obviously up from London to Newcastle, but rather than go from London directly to Edinburgh, yeah. it's gastronomic. I've been looking at prices like to get in there and uh, stay in there, and the prices are astronomical. What, during Edinburgh Fringe? Well, I would think well, so, I yeah. Well, just at the hotel for, you know, four or five days or whatever up there. Yeah, it costs a fortune because everybody and their dog wants to go to the Edinburgh Fringe. It's supply and demand. Right, which is why I thought, well, I've never been to Newcastle before, hence my question to you. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's like an hour and a half by train from there. Right. So I thought, well, why not kill two birds with one stone and uh, see Newcastle and uh, trot up to Edinburgh from there? That sounds like a very good idea. Where are you going to, uh, where are you going to stay? Uh, in a hotel, which I've booked. Probably something cheap and cheerful on the key side. Ah, right. Everyone's redeveloping near, near water. <laughs> Come to find out that's really the last place you want to be near. Who knew? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm working on the basis that water flows southward, so I should be all right up there. Yeah, well, it, the country is on a slope, so, yeah, it'll all collect down this way, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, and there was one other uh, question I had for you, uh, nipping back to American radio, talk show host by the name of Glenn Beck. That one's new to me. Oh, OK. Um, right. Beck right. as in B-E-C-K? Yes. Right, where does he work? Uh, he's based out of Philadelphia, uh, and he's syndicated all over the country. Philadelphia PA, eh? Yes, PA. Uh, and he's also on Fox TV uh, over there as well. Oh, he's a foamer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like a, 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 a right-wing foamer. I think you could say that about Glenn, right. yeah. Is he funny? Is he funny? Yes. Oh, yes. well, there you are. You see, I don't mind what their politics are. As long as they make you laugh, you've got to have a laugh, in you? <laughs> <laughs> I'll look up him as soon as I get home. Thanks a lot, right. Mick. Okay. Cheers, mate. Ta-da. Bye. Um, going on holiday in this country... Because, you know, the papers are full of these uh, half-price hotels in, uh, you know, this, that and the other, because no-one's going on holiday in this country uh, now because it's raining all the time, isn't it? Yeah. And so uh, uh, Heathrow is chock-a-block. It can't, can't take any more people. There's so many people wanting to, to leave the country. And I think this weekend is going to be the worst of all time, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, I think everybody and their dog, dog's not allowed, 
is going to Heathrow to uh, get out of here to somewhere, ni anywhere, just anywhere. I mean, people just are, are away from yeah, here. people are, are just going up to the counter, screaming, "Just get me out of here! <laughs> I'll get on a plane to anywhere." Um, Except Ireland. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somewhere <laughs> south. I think yeah. you don't have to go very far south uh, to no, to be you get uh, the heat, heat yeah wave. to be at risk of dying from heat. Yeah, isn't that bizarre? Wouldn't it be nice to die from heat, Luz? No. Instead of drowning and <laughs> freezing to death. Oh, well, it's not cold, is it? But I don't know. It has been pretty chilly, yeah. I bet it's pretty chilly out there right now. I suppose we are all in jumpers and... Exactly. We haven't worn any of our summer... I haven't seen you with your knees out for a while. No, nor yeah. will you. No. <laughs> my bright blue knees. No. I've got my f my fluffy slippers and my winter fleece I'm, I'm shuffling about the house in now. Not even your little sandals. Sandals? Do you wear sandals? Certainly not. Never. Sandals? Yeah. What kind of a person wears sandals? <laughs> Lots of men wear hippies. sandals. <laughs> Jesus and hippies. The only people who wear sandals. Hmm. Well, I think they don't look too bad, so long as well, a man very much takes depends. care of his feet. Well, yeah, it depends. I mean, if you wear them with um, knee-length socks... Oh, that's bad. <laughs> yes. As I've seen. <laughs> Any socks, to that, be honest. That's properly bad, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's just laughable. It does astound me how different men and women's feet are, though. Women can make their feet look quite attractive, but men's feet often just look very odd. Wonky toes, <laughs> <laughs> very grubby-looking. <laughs> well, we, um, our feet hardly ever see the light of day. Mm. They're mm. always mm. besocked. Yes. I bought some socks uh, just the other day. Oh, I'm so pleased with them, Luce. They're a fine hose. Really? Yes. What, one pair of socks you bought? No, I bought a super fun pack of five. Excellent. Oh, they're Last great. Last year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here is Bell Size Park. Hello, Judy. Hello. Judy, Judy, Judy. Um, he never said it, you know. Who? Cary Grant. Cary Grant? Yeah. Said what? Judy, Judy, Judy. What's Cary Grant got to do with oh, it? Oh, I thought that's what you were quoting. No, isn't it um, some hip-hop thing? Isn't it, wasn't oh, sorry. It Judy... Shows my age, sorry. It's some, like a hip-hop song, it's, it's Judy, spelt three ways. Judy, oh, right, Judy, I'm Judy. sorry, I'm too old for all that. Oh, uh, me too. Cary Grant. There's a song anyway. Ruby. Sorry? No, I think, it was, I think it was Judy, 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 or Julie, 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 or something like that. Oh. I, anyway. I say a lot of things, and, and I don't know why I say them, <laughs> but I think that's why I say that. Oh, right, sorry. Uh, Olympics. The Olympics. Yeah, I think you're underestimating... Um, in Beijing, which is next year, their budget is £23 billion. And I'm wondering how, if they've got a budget of £23 billion for 2008, how are we going to bring ours in for £9 billion four years later? Yeah, particularly as we have to pay our workers what, more or less the, um, uh, the minimum wage, whereas the Chinese workers just get chained together in a large... Uh, uh, gang and are whipped well, <laughs> until they actually die on the job. <laughs> <laughs> but presumably you have broadly the same events taking place, yeah. broadly the same number of competitors and mm -hmm. you need the same sort of buildings and all the rest of it. Yes. So if they've actually budgeted for 23 billion and no country has ever come in on budget anyway, no. they're all still paying for it. That's right. So how did we put in one, a bid for originally 3 billion? Or no, it was 2 billion, we forgot the VAT. Then it went up to three billion. <laughs> we didn't forget the VAT. We did. We well, forgot. no, I think we pretended to forget the well, VAT. But how is it possible? Well, it's like it's I like mean, anything. Five years. It's like anything. If you've got two competing companies, which we and France were, yeah, then the company that puts in the lowest bid will win, regardless of the fact that everyone knows that whatever they say the bid is going to be, it has absolutely no relation to what the final cost is going to be. Oh. But I'm just basing it purely on what Beijing themselves have put right. in their budget to be, which is 23 billion. billion. That's pounds. staggering, isn't it? Well, yeah. of course, Beijing has to um, put a lot of infrastructure in that isn't that uh, doesn't exist at the moment. Oh, and we've got infrastructure. Already, <laughs> Not yeah? there. No, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Where's our infrastructure that uh, is already in place? Crumbling. Even the new, even the new stuff's crumbling. Uh, yes. Well, yeah. you make a good point. I think you've underestimated. But I've essentially, I was right. So, well, so my my hundred percent batting record remains. Well, I think the twelve billion would be brilliant if it comes in at twelve billion. Yeah. I can't see it personally. Well, the the story that I was going to read uh, suggests that the twelve billion has already been broached. All oh, right. 
so I was underestimating. You were quite correct, Judy. Sorry. Well done. You win again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. <laughs> OK. Cheers. Bye. Ta-da. This is LBC. Come on. Come on. Just leave it. You wet the baby up. Ah, no way. You're joking. He'd sleep through for 25 to an articulated lorry sound and his horn went past. You were saying? I think you'll find that must have been a 30 tonner. When you break down, you just want to get going again quickly, and at Green Flag, that's what we do. Rapid breakdown cover starts from £27 online. What are you waiting for? Visit greenflag.com. Nick Abbott. Come on, we're running light! The cost of staging London's Olympics is expected to soar even higher, campaigners warned yesterday. This is in the uh, Super Soar Away Daily Express. Daily Express, is that, is that still going? How plucky of them. Apparently so. <laughs> Many good stories on Princess Diana recently? Um, they do call it that, don't they? However, today the uh, the Mail had all the stories of uh, Princess Di. Oh, I'm disappointed I missed that. The uh, Taxpayers' Alliance claimed that the final bill could top £12.6 billion. OK, I, I've been saying £12 billion for the longest time. Now they're saying £12.6. Let's go with uh, Judy, Judy, Judy. It's, it'll be £23 billion. I bet it will be, something staggering like that. It's just that they'll hide the extra £12 billion by, by putting it under a different column okay, that doesn't so have anything to do with the Olympics. You're going to change your cost, then? Yeah. Go on, then. Are you really going for £23 billion? Well, you, we'll never know, because it'll all be mendacity and obfuscation from the people who are telling us how much it costs. And by mendacity and obfuscation, I mean lying. They'll be lying to us, Lucy. Maybe it's worth a little bad. Uh, the uh, TPAs, the Taxpayers' Alliance, uh, claims the original budget may have to be quadrupled. How, uh, how on earth can an organisation that, uh, that uh, uh, demands respect get it wrong by a factor of four. I mean, if you were building a house, for instance, or, um, or, uh, or you wanted a suit made, mm. say you wanted a suit made, and you went to um, a gentleman's outfitters in Savile Row, and they said, ah, oh, yes, uh, very good, sir. that'll be a thousand pounds. And you came back, and they said, yeah, well, you know, we said a thousand. What we actually meant was four thousand. <laughs> <laughs> it's taken us longer than it meant we yeah. meant it to. I mean, how would you feel about that? You'd just stomp out the shop, wouldn't yeah. you? You can keep your lousy suit. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Olympics Minister Tessa Jowell, oh, she's doing a super job, has revealed the Treasury is panicking over costs, means the uh, main stadium... <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be on in the summer, right? Mm. How has this summer been? Very hot and little sunny bit, so A little bit far. wet, a little bit <laughs> wet, right? Yeah. The stadium, because of the uh, the overrun at cost, oh, this no. super new stadium will not have a... Roof. roof. <laughs> Builders have been told to slash £200 million off the £700 million projected cost of the new stadium, but even then the final bill of uh, half a billion pounds will be almost twice as much as the £280 million uh, cost originally estimated. OK, so if they're now saying it's going to be £500 million, it'll actually be a billion. You can double that. Whatever, I don't care what anybody says, the cost of building this new stadium, we just built one. We got Wembley Stadium. Why can't they use that? And the reason that they can't use that is because everyone's going to make, not everyone, not us, we're going to be paying for it, but everybody involved will be making a gigantic amount of money mm. by building all of these super new exotic buildings, which will be, oh, they'll look fantastic because they'll get a lot of hotshot architects who, given a budget of unlimited proportions will stamp their personality and their creative vision all, all over these exotic new buildings, none of which will have a bloomin' straight line, because that's just uh, far too uh, easy to build. They'll all have curved lines which will soar and swoop. You know, they'll, it'll all be uh, designed on a computer, mm. which is fine and dandy on a computer, but then some poor bloke from Poland has to go and nail it together. <laughs> and curved <laughs> lines cost a fortune. But never mind about that. We're paying for it. So it's triples all round. So once again, the mug punters in the middle, the ones with no money, us lot loose, we're going to be paying and paying and paying. And the people who've already got a gigantic stash of money, they're the ones who will be reaping and reaping and reaping. Doesn't it make you want to weep? Mm. 
Yeah. They reap, we, we weep. I'm going to get a t-shirt. I'm going to have a series of t-shirts made up. They reap, we weep. Listen to Nick Abbott's Super Show on LBC. Yours for only £12.6 billion. Pounds. Are you trying to be funny? Because I'm all out of laughs. Do you uh, put um, eyelash um, lengthener on loose? No. No? No. Can uh, you lengthen your eyelashes? Um, well, that's what they say, isn't it? But except how could you? Because well, they're the length they are, aren't they? Good Otherwise... point. Two of the world's largest cosmetic firms were censured for misleading the public. Cosmetics firms misleading the public. That's unusual, isn't it? <laughs> uh, L'Oreal was told that its telescopic mascara that's supposed to make eyelashes up to 60% longer is not all that it seems. Huh. The press and television advert featuring Penelope Cruz. Mm. She's, um, Tom... Tom's ex. Tom Cruise. Yeah. Her name is, was actually Cruise, though, wasn't it? But she was C-R-U-Z. Yeah. Oh, and he's the other one. C-R-U-I-S-E. Mm. Right. How weird is that? Mm. I mean, Bizarre. that looks like some sort of PR stunt, doesn't it? Mm. Cruise <laughs> marries Cruise. That's just... So they how likely marry. is that? Oh, well, that's just disgusting. <laughs> really? It never worked out, sadly. <laughs> um, anyway, this advert featuring Penelope Cruise... <laughs> broke uh, rules because the actress was wearing false eyelashes, exaggerating the effect, the Advertising Standards Authority said. What, on the ad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the <laughs> advert was for things that make your eyelashes 60% longer. Just look! And then there she was, wearing false eyelashes. And they were 60% longer, yeah. but they just weren't hers. That's exactly <laughs> right. Great. Um, they also said that Nivea um, was censured for claiming it's DNA. See what they did there? DNA. Mm, very good. DNA. Face cream helps protect your DNA from cell damage. What the <laughs> hell does that mean? Well, isn't your DNA in you always? Um, I don't know. I hope so. I thought it didn't change your DNA. It had apparently been tested only on arms, not faces. So your arms will look super. The arms that do dishes feel as soft as I feel. With yes. mild blue DNA. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're actually misleading the public. Can you believe that? I mean, uh, next year we're telling me that Kate Moss doesn't have flawless skin. All those <laughs> photographs you see of a, on uh, uh, magazine adverts looking absolutely the picture of health. That wall-eyed, spotty, stick-thin freak of a woman. Lots of models look like that, though, don't they? And they none of them look perfect. like that. Oh, they oh. all look like... They, they look weird. I mean, if you have you ever seen have... an actual model, they look like... Some sort of eight, you know um, the Star Wars Episode Two, not the second one that they made, mm. but the uh, but Episode Two. James, you must be uh, a sci-fi nerd. I've never seen an entire Star Wars film in my life. What? All the way through. Okay, well I'll just. Uh, I'll, I have. I'll, have you? Have yeah. you seen Episode Two when yeah, Ewan probably. McGregor goes off to this uh, island? Oh, I was probably Which called. Which one is two? The Phantom Menace. Oh, blimey! You even know the names? No, it's not the Phantom Menace. Um, I think it was Attack of the Clones. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> And yeah. he goes on to an island where they're all making those uh, those clones for them. The clone, um, the uh, clone army, the kind robot of thing. Uh, army. Yeah. No, they're not robots, but they're uh, you know. They're like yeah. Well, you know thing. those giant, tall <laughs> That's aliens. That's what models look like. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> um, and they come in and say. <laughs> 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 yeah, but once you stick a wig and some makeup on yes. them and a bit of clothing, they look fabulous. And, and false eyelashes, they look just the very thing. Yeah. Mm. So they were they're misleading the public, eh? I mean, next you'll be telling me that Twiggy doesn't actually have any lines on her face. <laughs> like she was fronting that ad campaign for, it's not just, <laughs> not just clues. They're <laughs> <laughs> clues. <laughs> like it's a porno ad. <laughs> Uh, I mean, they must have, to look like that, I mean, what is she, 80 years old, would be, right? <laughs> I think you're doing her a disservice there. <laughs> I mean, to look like she does on those adverts, they must have shot her through a screen that you could see a solar eclipse through safely. She does barely, look very good. Barely no light must pass through that screen. But I've seen her on... a whole tub um... of Vaseline on that lens. 
Have you seen her on... Well, you wouldn't have seen this. Britain's Next Top Model or America's Next Top Model. And she sometimes goes on that. And she does look very good. Well, yeah, of course. But, you know... But not that good. Well... She does actually have lines on her face. She yeah, must sure. do. Well, but you don't need to have any lines on your face these days, do you? You don't just, need to. Well, you just Botox them out. Yeah, but then you start to look like Elton John. You, you can't express an emotion. I don't think Elton John looks as faceless as I saw Travolta. Elton John, and, uh, uh, t to my shame, I was watching one of those Pop Idol or X Factor or yeah. one of those things, and he came on, and either he was stunned to be there, or he had a face <laughs> full of poison. It was, it was one of the two, <laughs> because he, his facial features did not move. Yeah. Well, did you see Travolta on with uh, Jonathan Ross a while back? No. Because his was exactly like that. Really? And even when he was laughing, he didn't look happy, and it right. looked really strange. John Travolta and he wouldn't... always had such a big smile on him, didn't he? I'm amazed, John Travolta. I thought John Travolta was a man's man. What the hell's he pumping his face full of? Like, I well, thought well, that you've he. You've got to keep your superstar looks. Yeah, yeah but I. D but I thought that a certain type of man. I mean, Clint Eastwood wouldn't do that, would he? Um, no. Robert Redford probably wouldn't uh, do that, and he's uh, he made a living out of being a pretty boy. Paul Newman wouldn't have done that. Marlon no. Brando wouldn't have done that. No. John Travolta. Hmm. Does he want to do that? Oh. Apparently, sometimes his hairline is a bit suspect. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can understand the hair thing. Yeah. Um, but then, on the other hand, people like Ed Harris and. Um, Marlon Brando, again, the, you know, the greatest screen actor, some say, of all time. Yeah. He didn't cover up uh, any hair loss, did he? But I think normally men start to, they look just as good as they get older, if not better. It doesn't really matter if they start to lose some of their hair or they go a bit greyer, because it looks okay. Well, Whereas you know, women just sort of start to fall apart a bit. Well, now, bit. do they, is there actually a difference? Because I don't think there is a difference. I think it's society's um, opinion of, uh, it's, it's society's perception of what getting older does, or, or is, or, or, well, I'm mean, not putting this very well, it's society's perception of the, uh, acceptable, acceptability of looking older. Mm. If men look older, then, uh, because women choose men on their fitness to protect their children, on a very basic level, that's yeah. how women have always, you know, back when we used to grunt at each other in caves, mm -hmm. it used to be because you carried a big stick and you could beat a caribou to death. Nowadays, being, uh, having, a, uh, being, a man being fit in society, being mm. able to take care of babies, is all about money, right? I mean, you don't have to be super strong, you just have to be rich. I mean, look at Roman Abramovich, blokes a weed. <laughs> he carries a big stick monetarily. Mm. He doesn't need to be strong. He has people to do that for him. And so if, uh, as a man gets older, then, um, uh, it's likely that his earning power increases. Yeah. And so an, uh, a man who ages, or a man who is age, aged, uh, who has a bit of grey in his hair, mm. then he looks to be fitter in society, because he'll have more money, right? But Which is why women are always falling over Richard Gere and, uh... I don't know. You, you know. George Clooney and things. Yeah, exactly. Well, and women are less likely to fall over, um... I don't know if I was I thinking know. of it in monetary terms, though. Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Although he's, he's loaded now <laughs> as well, so that's not a very good example. He's got a few years to go yet before we can count him in. Well, he's got 12 million pounds loose. Yeah, I know, but he's, what, still under 20, isn't he? What's I got to do with that? Well, when he's... he might not look so... well... Oh, he's right. going to look... yeah, he doesn't look old now, but he's... No. But yeah, it wasn't a very good example, because while, while he's not old, he's mm -hmm. rich. Yeah. But women, on the other hand, men are attracted to women, just as they always have been, for their child-bearing... Um, on a very yeah. be the basic level, I'm yeah. talking about, just the, pro uh, the continuation of the human race yeah. mm -hmm. and the, uh, you know, the, uh, the reproduction of your own genes. Yeah. On a very basic level, we're attracted to um, uh, young and fit because they're more able to spit out the babies, right, than a woman who's 50 <laughs> who has lost the ability. <laughs> uh, you know, as far, oh, as, as, far as nature nice. goes. Well, it's true. <laughs> spit them out. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if, if a girl gets pregnant at 16, my doctor friend tells me, she can be w walking uh, down the aisles at Sainsbury's and give birth, and she doesn't even notice it's so painless and easy. Whereas a woman who is... less painful when you're younger? Well, apparently, yeah. Uh, whereas a woman who is 40 will be screaming for 36 hours. He's the man that comes in and gives them an injection in their back. 
<laughs> you know, the, uh, the, what do they call it? The, um, um oh, that's going to really annoy me. The, you're given a, um, oh. oh, what is it? Oh, no, you're out of time. You are out of time. I know, well, I still am going to think about it. So that's the, the, so I'm making this up as I go along, by the way, but that might be why it's more acceptable for a man to age and why it's perceived that an older-looking man look where men look better as they get older because mm -hmm. they actually look uh, fitter for the environment Can whereas the women answer? women on the <laughs> other hand look at that light so as soon as i can't think of a word the uh, the, the phone lines uh, light up like it's christmas i'll go through them in a minute i'll punch <laughs> them up don't don't worry about answering them. i'll go through them and uh, just you know yeah. screenless whereas uh, a woman on the other hand as she gets older her fitness for purpose yeah. at a very basic level and i'm not saying you know, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm putting this forward, not, I don't think this, but this is like a truism. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, so that they are perceived to be uh, less attractive as they get older than men. But I, don't you think women would also perceive other women as they get older to look less attractive? Well, they do. You, you, you prove that by, yeah. um, by scratching all women's eyes out at the beginning of this no, conversation. No, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say women it to be are, horrible. Yeah, I just, well, yeah, you are. Awful. No, I, no because I find it, I find it depressing for myself that I, I know, gradually, as I get older, it just looks worse and worse. But, That's no, my point is that we don't look worse. Men don't actually look better as we got older and women look worse. It's just your perceptions of how uh, of your um fitness for purpose so it's not the um that you look worse it's the it's it's how age is perceived mm. because men can still in effect function in that uh, way that women are yes in reproducing the yes. uh, the uh, the species yeah of, you know, forwarding and so their therefore genes, you think women, women will can't. always see men in that way, that yes. they can still mm -hmm. procreate, yes. so therefore they are And more still protect the babies. But well, women, on the other hand, can't have the babies. Mm. So I think, I think it's less about how you actually look and more about the perception of what age is Perhaps. for the human race, for the um, furthering of our genes. It's mm. in our genes, Luce. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's in our genes, and it's got to come out. Uh, no time for the old in and out, love. I've just come to read the meter. Uh, here's a mobile. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm so surprised to get through to you. I didn't run. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Um, are you still there? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm here and I will be for the foreseeable future, yes. Oh, marvellous. I, I heard you talked about the Olympic Games earlier on. Yeah. Um, you know, they're going to cost, what, 12, 12 billion pounds now? That's what they're thinking now, yeah. Good grief. Because we just had a thing built in Woking. Prince Charles came down about a week, well, about a month ago. <laughs> yes. Did you hear about it? Uh, what was it? It's a big uh, canopy they built outside Woking Station. A canopy? It's got oh, massive. Goes right up, you know. Goes right across the whole streets, right oh. outside the station. Right. It's going to cost three point five billion, a million pounds, and uh, they're closing down, trying to close down the A and E hospital in St Peter's in uh, Ottershaw. Well, you've got to get your priorities straight, don't you? Oh, good grief! It's three and a half million pounds for a temporary tent. That's great. Yeah, and the other thing was, which uh, I was going to ring up originally about, is um, these uh, young kids who you can't name because it's a uh, they're underage or something. Yeah, I know, that's right. Seen they're underage. Yeah. Well, I can't believe that because I, I, I'd left, we left school when I was 15 and I was in the army when I was 18. I talked to kill people. Right. And I couldn't vote. <laughs> no, quite. And, and we're protecting the guilty by... Uh, that really peeves me every time I read it. You know, there's, they just killed someone, but we can't name them because it's, uh, because they're, uh, you know, not 18 or whatever it is. That's correct, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just, um, and, uh, as a society, oh, yeah. we are hastening our own demise. We are committing yeah. societal suicide, boys and girls. It's almost the definition of mental illness. We're a sick society. Well, I can't believe what's happening. That poor guy, that poor lorry driver, 
there was a 14, 15, and 16 year, or 16 year Yeah, I know, but we can't talk about that because it's, uh, you know, right. it's a case that's going to come to court, and but I don't want to talk about that because it's too no. blum and depressing. Where were the parents? Anyway, listen, thanks a lot, mate. I've got to go. All right. Okay, th Cheers. thanks for calling. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> I didn't. Southern, hello, Danny. The misty word is. Yes. Epidural. Epidural. <laughs> Would you like to go for the car? Well, I'd like to go for something because I, this time yesterday I was in Greece where it was 95. I came back today, it's pouring with rain. I went to go and see The Simpsons tonight and I'm ready to kill myself. <laughs> well, it was it was just so disappointing. Yeah. It was really, really disappointing. Thank you. I was right again. You was. You're sort of sitting there thinking, any minute now it's going to be funny. Yes. Not like South Park. No, which was it's funny brilliant. from the very moment it started. Well, the music in it as well. Some of the songs were just fantastic. I tell you what, this first South Park movie is could quite possibly be the best musical I've ever seen. It, absolutely spot on. F forget four, four brides, four weddings, or whatever it's called. Yeah. Seven brides for seven brothers. Any of that rubbish. You can't beat Carl's mum is a big fat. Brother. Don't anyway. say it. <laughs> so there you are. Epidural is a mystery word. Do I win Lucy's four centimetre telly? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Goodbye. Thanks, Danny. Cheers. Here is uh, Greenwich. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Nick. Sarah. Hi, guys. Very good. Sorry. Hi. Hello, Sarah. How are you? Super. Hey. Um, I just come back from the Transformers movie. Oh, the Transformers movie. Now, this is one I want to see. Go on, tell you me have something good. Got to see it. See? It's the best film Yay! I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, we're all in the car and we can just watched it and I'm just like, oh, it's, it's amazing. You're right. American films are so much better than British films. And um, comedy. I don't think I said that, but that's, uh, that's probably right as well. British films are all a blooming same, aren't they? They're they either, are, they're they're either like, about gangsters. Yeah, gangsters and all that rubbish. Uh, or it's about... Go and see Transformers, Nick. I will. Do it, do I it. I absolutely will. I'll be okay. in, the f in the front row. I'll have to strap myself in. I'll be so excited. It is so loud as well. It's, Excellent. It's amazing. All right. Thanks a lot, Sarah. Bye, bye, bye. Ta-da. Yes, I want to see that loose. There'll be explosions and death sprayed around. Isn't that going to be great? Can you even wait? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can. <laughs> Transformers loose. It's going to be the hit of the summer. Oh, that doesn't appeal to me. It'll have special defects and everything. Oh, no. No, I'll just sit at home and watch Wire in the Blood. I'm quite happy with that. But that's that. You Maybe do a bit of gardening. If I get, if but I'm you've lucky. got a garden. Little garden. Oh. Only little tiny. Do you let your little doggy run around yeah. in it? Oh. Got a little Barbie. Little doggy. <laughs> You've got one of those annoying yappy dogs, don't you, with a bow in its hair? He hasn't got a bow in his hair. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you this all the time, but you're still determined to think he has. Yappy dogs should have their vocal cords removed. Now, I don't mean that they should have them ripped out with a fish hook, but I mean, you know, a painless operation to just stop them yapping like that. What is wrong with those dogs? I'm serious. Well, he doesn't... Ours doesn't do it that often, oh, actually. Oh, come off it. Like He's that very all good. the time. Let, no. me, let me hear that from your neighbours. He doesn't, honestly. He's a good boy. Well, ish. <laughs> Except we did take him to the pet shop today to go and find him some other food. And he did decide to pee against every single post he could find. In and the pet shop? Yeah. In the pet shop? In the pet shop. You know, in one of well, these Well, that's their own blooming fault, having a post in a pet shop. Well, what not, do they expect? Well, like, in every aisle, I mean. Just like at the end of every aisle he was going. Against the food, against everything. Didn't care. Just thought he was. He well, was where was the his... owner when he was doing this? I was holding him on the end of my leg. What, having a fag, were you? <laughs> no, I was not. <laughs> <laughs> I kept saying, please stop doing that. <laughs> well, they kept was... looking at me oh, like, oh, good. Uh, what have I done? Grief. <laughs> Don't have children, Lucy. You're not a fit parent. <laughs> what were we saying about discipline earlier? <laughs> exactly. Well, you just watched him do it. No, not I once, did tell but them. multiple times. I said, can I clear this up? And they said, oh, don't worry. The dogs do it all the time. We clear it up at the end. The end so, of what? The end of the day. I am <laughs> outraged. They should take the do. owner's face and rub it in it. <gasps> in it. That is appalling. Well, I carry my bags everywhere for the other business. So I never leave that lying around. But I passed some people um, coming to work the other day who had um, gone to the trouble of picking up what looked like a gigantic <laughs> amount of dog product, <laughs> and they were standing waiting to cross the road, yeah. and they just dropped the bag with the product in it on the road oh, as they were just no. waiting to cross. I, I thought, uh, that's horrible. What kind of a 
what kind of a person would do that? Oh, that's awful. I mean, I, c I can understand that people are morons and they drop litter. Anyone who drops litter is a moron, and that's the... Uh, there's no getting around it, you mm. just are. You're not helping, you're part of the problem, you should be put on an ice floe and set off into the sea. I'm, s I'm getting more and more... Mm. Um, well, I agree with that. It's, uh, hang them and flog them uh, as I get older. Yeah, and as I said last week, don't hang them and flog them. Flog them first, then hang them. <laughs> but dog product is not safe. I mean, it's not, it's not you know, it's exactly. really unhygienic. Yeah. But I, I can't understand why people don't just carry a bag around with them all the time, every, every time. It's but to go to the trouble of putting seconds. it in a bag and then just dropping it in the pavement, like, what's that? There's no need. That's just so weird. There's so many, you know, bins and dog bins around now. You don't need to do that. Really? I don't think. But no, it's not necessary. Curb your yeah. dog. Well, but how many people I've seen walking around with their dogs and they just let them do their business and then they just walk yeah, away as in if they a haven't pet done shop. it? No, like business business. Worse business. In well, a I don't, I'm mystified though. So you're wandering yeah. around a shop. If I was wandering around a shop with a dog that started peeing on the <laughs> shop, I would pick <laughs> said dog up and leave the store. <laughs> we had I mean, to did that not occur to you? I mean, how many times I did it told pee? Them. Multiple times. Yeah, I many, did. like six. About that, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I repeat my question. Where was the owner while this was happening? You were there. You were just standing there, watch it do it. I mean, no. I'm mystified by that. <laughs> well, it was really awkward because we had to get our stuff, and I did say to them, "Look, have you got any cloths for me to clean up?" And they said, "Don't worry, we mop it all down afterwards." So what else can I do? So it sits there all day? Because, no, the point is, though, is that in these pet shops, all the dogs go around doing it because they all want to leave their scent. And so they all have a little mark up as they go around, and, you know, what can I do? You think I should have just left the store? Absolutely. I would have picked the dog up. I did pick him up, but then he was wriggling out of my hands to go down again. The dog's <laughs> about... Three inches long. <laughs> it's one not. of those microscopic handbag he is dogs. Not. He's about Britney this big. Britney Spears carries around. He's about this big. Brit, uh, how, how big is that, Luce? We're looking at ten inches. About that. Approximately, yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit generous. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to err on the side of generosity, haven't you? Well, yeah. It makes us feel better. <laughs> well, I'm outraged. That you're that sort of slovenly oh, owner no. that lets his dog just go all over everywhere. I don't. I know. thought you were a nice lady. I am, but well, if I'd had some wipes with me, I could have done that. I suppose maybe that's <laughs> what? what I'll do. Okay, well, well apart from anything else, around. health and safety. I mean, mm. people will be slipping on that. I hope you put some cones around it. <laughs> yeah, I, mean I carry cones around with me as Good. well. <laughs> and those and those yellow signs that say "careful." It's a slippery surface. Yeah. Yeah. With a picture well, of a man slipping. Well, I'm quite right too. Well, okay. I mean, the people in the shop weren't going to tell you off because they th they hope beyond no, measure. They went, oh, isn't he sweet? Yeah, oh, don't exactly. Worry. Because they were hoping you were going to buy something. I did. Lots. What did you buy? Bought more food. Bought a new lead because his other lead's broken. And we bought him some new treats that don't have wheat in them. And they're oh natural. My God. Well, no, because he's got allergies. Oh, shut he up! Has. It's a dog. He'd he's eat got his own allergies. He'd eat his own feces. He's got allergies. He's a dog. He has got allergies. He's been pulling all his fur off on the back. He's been scratching it off and biting it. That's about the most middle class thing I've ever heard in my life. Your <sighs> dog's got allergies. I'm annoyed he's got allergies. I find it pathetic, quite honestly. But the vet has told me. I've I've tried to protest it and say mm -hmm. there must be something else wrong with him. Do you feed him organic food from Waitrose? No, he, e <laughs> <laughs> he eats venison. Venison? <laughs> <laughs> he has a venison and potato <laughs> diet. Oh, oh so, come so off it. I know. And and it's blooming expensive, these stupid tins of venison, and I'm sick of buying it. But, venison. You know, it's the Have only you thing ever that's heard the anything itching. like it? <laughs> but now we're mixing it up with some dry food. We have to keep introducing new foods, and every time he has an itch, he goes back to the venison, because that calms it. So, yeah. It's I an expensive shocked. dog. <laughs> and what do you get in return? <laughs> that. <laughs> An annoying, yappy, venison munching, peeing ball of fluff with a bow in its hair. Hoping I could get my nails clipped and out of the way before you got here. I'll just chew them like Gordon does. <laughs>
I wonder if people have told him to stop doing that, because that is really disgusting. I mean, a, a, a man of his age, I mean, anybody over the age of, like, five should stop biting their nails, shouldn't they? There seems, there seems to be something deeply wrong there. I mean, he'll have, um, assistants, stylists swarming over him, so as not to make too much of a difference, because he still has to look dour. Hmm. But now he's PM. Will he not get regular manicures? Would that not solve the problem? So there's nothing that left to manicure. He hasn't got any, na any nails left. But if they just give him a little bit of attention to his hands, it might make him feel a little bit special and then not want to bite them. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I wonder if they're going to uh, try and... Is there something wrong with his nose? Can he actually breathe through his nose? Because he's got this... This, well, this is why I play the the Darth Vader thing. He breathes through his now his mouth, and it's not just sort of any old breath. It's, he seems to unhinge his bottom jaw <laughs> and gasp for breath like at the end snore. of every sentence. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. Does I he have something wrong him. with his nose? Can he breathe through his nose? Maybe you should send uh, an email. Oh, I certainly will do that. You yeah. can do that, can't mm -hmm. you? Email the prime minister. Yeah, sure, I will. Yeah. Why do you breathe through your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll send him a letter. I'll put some talcum powder in there, you know, to. To uh, make his hands dry. Yeah, maybe yeah. you could do an envelope full of talcum powder stuff and things like that. That's <laughs> <laughs> go wrong. I'll send I'll send him some mustard in the post. Mustard powder. That's what I'll send him. An, an envelope full of mustard powder with uh, a letter with my address on it. Yeah. Yeah, he'll really appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be in touch very quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll be. They'll be abseiling through my windows. <laughs> and you'll say, what? I was just trying to yeah. help with his nails. <laughs> uh, it's Jethro Dull. Yeah, it is strange. You know, his, his, whole, his whole mouth movement and jaw movement is really quite unusual because every time you ask, you ask him a question, he kind of, his jaw drops. Yeah. And he takes a deep in, in, intake of breath. Mm. And then cheeks either side of his face kind of vibrate for about three seconds in, in great big flapping movements. Maybe he's, um, not human. I do wonder that sometimes. I wonder about the whole of the Labour cabinet, perhaps coming from the place of the planet Zog, because they don't seem to be in the same planet as we're on. And I'd, li and I'd like to refer to, the, to, to their current policy about um, building ten zillion houses to cope with the housing crisis. Yeah, right? that'll be a good idea. Let's concrete over more grass uh, that would uh, absorb the rain and, uh, and, and so that the rain has got actually nowhere to go. That, that's going to make a tremendous difference. Well, you know Yvette Cooper, who's married to Ed Balls and went to either Oxford or Cambridge because she's very, very brilliant and fantastically intellectual. Aren't they all? And then went on to Harvard to, to, to increase her brilliance and fantastic perception of human condition understanding and everything, whatever and in the whole wide world. She said it's okay to build houses on floodplains, I think, if I remember rightly from my uh, media watch this week. Well, they're still saying that. They're, they're, people have raised a Question, a finger of doubt and said maybe it's not a good idea to build houses on floodplains and the answer has come back well there's nothing we can do about that the decision's been made and of course we're going to do that yeah, how no, stupid is that do they not watch the news no they don't they don't seem to refer to reality do they they think that it's, it's almost they have this sort of like um 1920s stalinist sort of view that um, you know five-year plans building massive nuclear power stations and massive dams and massive everything in the best socialist tradition, will solve the whole of the world's problems. But, the, uh, yeah, the, the state has all the answers, yes, when, <laughs> when all the evidence is to the contrary, yeah, the state has none of the answers. Whereas, you see, that's their response to global warming, is to be very, very silly about it, but our, you see, that, you know, when it comes to us, they look down at us and, and decide that if you're going to make a five-mile journey in your 1600 Ford Escort, you need to get more taxes to stop you doing it. It's quite obvious, isn't it, that we get punished for our uh, total um, ecological irresponsibility, whereas they um, get rewarded because they think that building three million houses is going to answer the current housing crisis and get them re-elected, which is here's, what they really want. Here's what I think about global warming, which I'll, well, I don't want to talk about at length because it's all anybody's talking about these days. Changing the light bulbs in your house won't make the slightest bit of difference. Stopping driving 4 by 4s won't make the slightest bit of difference. Banning the sale of patio heaters won't make the slightest bit of difference. If we have actually changed the weather on this planet, it's too late. Yeah. I th also think it might be a good idea to speak to the Chinese and the Indians a little bit, and, and, and the Americans slightly, and say, um, if 
if it is all due to hydrocarbon emissions, then don't you think you chaps have slowed down a bit on your economic development? Yeah, and they'll turn round and give us the Chinese finger. Exactly. Because why should they not have their plasma screen TVs and their walk-in fridges? Because we've got them. No, it's... Yeah, and, th and this is why America didn't want to sign up to the Kyoto Treaty, and, and everyone in Europe was, oh, how those barbarians, how dare they? Kyoto Treaty was going to cost them something like three trillion, not million or billion, three trillion. That's a number so large, I don't even know what it is. It's three trillion dollars, and was going to delay the onset of global warming by five years. What's the point? It is a difficult, yes, it is a difficult um, point to put across to them. And so, course, just be happy that you're alive now, <laughs> because in a hundred years, yeah. uh, it's going to be all rather different. Nick? Yeah. Can I talk about one other subject? Anything else. Ah, and that's um, the, the, the aesthetics of attractiveness, which I think you were talking about earlier, weren't you? About, you know, what, what is the psychology of, of, of attractiveness. Yeah. And I think it's quite simple. In men, um, it's all about... Um, the physical beauty of the, of the female, mm -hmm. and um, and in women, it, they somehow are born with a genetic capacity to look into your bank account even when they haven't seen it. <laughs> so it's all about um, a, a sort of materialistic um, capacity, you know, in the man. There, and that's why you end up with a man like Bernie Eccleston, who's um, four foot nothing and 60 years old and not exceptionally masculine, attractive, like what, say, Superman is, Christopher, what his name was. And um, he ends up with a six foot blonde um, supermodel. Yeah. Because it's about... Well, she must, she must like him for his hot body. I want my purely for his personality, and if he was poor and on the street, she'd still be with him. Yeah, uh, absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because women women have that, you know, that, that pure emotional love. Lucy has narrowed her eyes and is shaking her head. <laughs> <laughs> well, it yes. seems to me, I mean, let, let, take another example. Let's think of um, Rod Stewart. Doesn't seem to have any problem whatsoever, the older he gets, to attract younger, attractive sort of um, virile, if, that, if that's such a word, to, to be used for women. Women, you know. It, 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 but it, he doesn't it, look awful now, does All he? right, well, Rod Stewart was probably uh, a bad example to take. Yeah. Let's yeah, take... OK, Michael Douglas. Well, Michael Douglas is probably not a good example to take no, either, because he doesn't look that bad. Well, let's take... Um, um, uh, who's that uh, ex-member of Parliament who's got a classical show? What's that guy called? Um, what about Sven? Sven Joran Eriksson. Sven, okay. Yeah, because he, he uh, attracts all of these... The women seem to be falling all over him because of his uh, beautiful face and his no. uh, firm, lithe physique. Of course not. No, but I don't think he's that attractive. Nor does he seem to have any kind of personality. I mean, he's, he's just... dull. Boring! But he did make... I read in the paper that he made £28 million by being England's manager. Isn't he still earning as well? £28 million! <laughs> what?! He's not paid by results, that's for sure. No. But I think you, uh, you've you got argument. something there, Jethro, and um, we're still waiting for the rebuttal from Lucy. You oh, can well, narrow your eyes and shake your head loose. What's well, your answer? Because yes. I'm not so fickle as to go for men like that, and I think there are lots of women that don't aren't interested in men for their bank balance. I think that just, you know, like a guy for, oh, for his it's, personality. It's, it's, yeah, but Jethro, Jethro, let me um, uh, just interject uh, a moment on your behalf, Jethro. Okay. I'm oh, no. I'll stick up That's for you for just a you. moment. <laughs> Um, no, I'm playing moderator. Okay. I am uh, balanced and fair at right. all times. Of course. Even when I'm unbalanced. <laughs> OK. Uh, he's not saying that all women do this, or all rich men are... Um, but the majority... Attractive. Yeah, but it, it's... Um, I don't think the majority It's a trend. Do. No, but the thing is, is we're only plucking out a few strange couplings, <coughs> aren't we, really? And we're not really picking out... The majority. All right, let me put it to you like this, as a, um, a, a hypothetical example. Mm -hmm. If a, a short, fat, ugly guy mm -hmm. um, had a hundred million pounds in the bank, yeah. do you think he would have a hard time getting laid? Well, it's a no, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but I but I couldn't think of anything worse than that. Right. Well, me either. 
But so. But by and large, me, if uh, me, if the, a short, fat, ugly woman who's fifty years old had a hundred million pounds in the bank, do you think that uh, teenage uh, uh, men would be falling all over her? No, they would not. I think they would. No, they would not. If, I do. If, I think they would no, find her quite they sexy would, she's powerful. A short, fat, ugly woman. Yeah, they still would find her sexy because she's Lucy, got a sexy bank balance. Oh, I think it please. goes both ways. It definitely doesn't. Jethro, back me up. It definitely does not. Young men don't find old, ugly women attractive just because they're rich. They don't. It, uh, the, the, the inverse is true. I, I think it's the, the proportionality is, is, is definitely different. I think that, you know, the... the the number of, of, of young, attractive men that would be willing to um, uh, to lay down uh, their um, sense of aesthetic <laughs> for, for, for financial gain is less than, than, than the other way around. Yes, but th there again, it, it goes back to what I was saying earlier on. It's, it's not because uh, women are superficial and men are uh, uh, deep. It's almost the uh, complete opposite is true. It's that uh, men... Uh, value um, uh, looks and fitness to reproduce, mm. Mm. and women value the ability to protect any yeah. babies that ensue. Oh, it's primordial. Yeah, but although men and women are supposed to be attracted to one another, both for their sort of reproductive side, aren't they? Because you're supposed to be able to see your kind of common ground for what you would yes. want to reproduce. I just right. thought of another one. So... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just thought of another one. Yes. Um... Aristotle and Nassis and Jackie Kennedy. Now that's classic. That that really is about that's about power structures and power dynamics and and social status and kudos and money and everything. And Melda Marcos and and um, uh, whatever his name was Marcos and you know it happens all the time. Is that rich, powerful men attract kind of well probably um, socially aware, aspirational, attractive women. Yeah, but the, Jackie hot, Kennedy, the hot babes. But Jackie Kennedy was, you know, not just some ditzy bird, was she? No, she was a woman who wanted to continue uh, her life in the uh, luxury to which she'd, be she'd become accustomed. She was yeah, considered so she one wouldn't of the world's most easy catch, though, women. would she? Huh? So she wouldn't have been an easy catch, would she? Well, none of them are... Aristotle and Asis. I mean, it's not... Yeah, they've, but... got to, they've got to play the game. They've got to play the game. Half of the fun is in the chasing, isn't it? You, it's, it, I mean, there's the mating game. It's been talked about all the time, isn't it? The mating game, how to select your partner. Half the fun is in the chasing. That's why you had this sort of, um, the, the um, that social thing. When, when, when women used to come out and, um, what was it used to in sort of... Uh, the Debs. Deb, yeah, debutante's balls, isn't it? Yeah, outrageous, really. It was like a cattle market. Yeah, it was all about that. Is it finding the right man. But I think that the, the, the nub, uh, if you don't mind me using that phrase, Jethro, uh, let's get to the nub of it, shall we? Yeah, OK, good uh, idea. How much uh, do you earn? Are you a well-off man? Uh, um, I, I, I take the religious path of, 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 of truth and poverty. Right, poor, then. <laughs> and also... And, and how much are you getting these days? <laughs> um, None at all. Uh, no, I, th I'm, I'm, I think I'm that it's there in a nutshell. In closing, Jethro... Stop whining. The trend. They're big mouths, and now came talk. Talk, talk. Oh, I know. Peter. Hello. Peter. Yeah, I was just listening to your caller earlier, and all this talk, and uh, I always remember an expression of uh, a person I worked for a while back was, would Princess Diana have married uh, Prince Charles if he was a dustbin man? Uh, no, he, she would not. So, I mean, it's basically it's the money and the, the power that goes with these uh, ladies, Colin. Yeah, the your fitness for purpose, the ability to take care of any subsequent offspring, yeah. Yeah, that's all it was. So. Oh, all right. Thanks <laughs> a lot, Peter. Well, I'm a great fan of Princess Diana, but it's neither here nor there. I will refuse to hear a bad word about that divine lady on this show. Do you? Yes. Okay, then. <clears throat> All right, thanks, Peter. Okay, cheers, bye. Uh, as long as you don't say anything controversial, that's excellent. I bow to no one in my admiration for the blessed Princess Di. Do I lose? Absolutely not. Here, do you have any staff? Staff? Yeah. In my house? Mm hmm. Well,. It's a yes. <laughs> we just got a cleaner last oh, week. Oh, blimey. 
Is there no end to your poshness? <laughs> well, I feel a bit bad about you it. You and your yappy dog and your 26-inch uh, flat-screen television, Luce. I know. I was stunned by this, the thing that I read this week. Half of all homes in Britain employ domestic staff. Half! You're the only that person is... I know who's got domestic staff. Really? Do we call it domestic staff? Well, yeah. Once a, f once a fortnight? Either uh, there's uh, an earthquake or I'm having a heart attack. What? What do you mean? You oh, not... no, I think I'm all right. Oh. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so now we're having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, half of all domestic homes in Britain employ domestic staff. Can you believe that? But I'm stunned that by that. That is a huge number, isn't half. it? Half. It's a real luxury, too, isn't it? I think. How much does uh, this person cost? Oh, a year. Much. I haven't worked it out. I don't want to. Well, how much? <laughs> well, well, it's about 24 quid a go. And how many times a week? Once a fortnight. Once a fortnight? Yeah. Well, what do they do once a fortnight? Do the cleaning. Once I, a fortnight? Yeah, I do it the rest of the time. Do you? Yeah, I said no to every week. Because I feel lazy otherwise. I feel lazy anyway. But, you know, the dog makes a bit of a mess, so... <laughs> I haven't got time to clean the floors all the time. Don't you, um, clean up before they get there? Well, I did do that a bit, which is really silly, isn't it? But you kind of... If you get someone in your home, you don't want them to come in and go, Oh, <laughs> that's awful. Well, that's just ridiculous, though. Are you aware of that? I know. I didn't actually do the cleaning cleaning, but I did make sure everything was really tidy. I was stunned uh, with it. Uh, we, we pay, not individually, obviously, but mm. uh, as a nation, £20 billion pounds a year for our staff. I just find that astonishing. Households pay an average of uh, just shy of two grand a year employing domestic helpers, according to research published by um, some internet site who would dearly love me to mention their name. <laughs> <laughs> but you're just not going no. to. <laughs> uh, it's not... Uh, uh, do you have dog minders? No. I've got parents and neighbours. Right. You can earn a fortune walking dogs now. Yeah. Yeah, you can. It's blooming expensive. Because you take like 12 at a time. It's about a ten or an hour I was looking at one side. Just to come and... And they, they're just to sit in your home. Eat your crisps. Yeah. <laughs> complain about your microscopic television. Nose in your drawers. <laughs> <laughs> It's not just child miners and cleaners that Britons are employing. Domestic staff includes chauffeurs, dog walkers, personal shoppers and house sitters. No longer a luxury afforded by only the rich, 48% of Britons employ an average of three outside helpers. Like, if you ever need uh, something... I suppose um, nannies? Yeah, nannies. Yeah, Most baby popular sisters. positions for staff are window cleaners, gardeners, cleaners, and odd job men who are hired on a regular basis. Yeah. I can, yeah, I can imagine that, though, really. However, it is chauffeurs and personal assistants and specialist baby helpers who are paid the most for their services. Yeah. So you can outsource parenting. Exactly. Didn't people used to always have window cleaners? I hardly ever see window cleaners these days. Mm, yes. Because didn't they used to just come down the street and say, do you want your windows cleaned? Mm. I'm, I'm sure they there. still do. I mean... But I, I, I never see milk floats, but I'm sure they still exist, out in the suburbs, you know, where normal people live. Well, I think that's good. That's much more eco-friendly to use bottles and dispose of them, isn't it, than yeah, the they, They're selling milk ones, in, um, in, bo in bags now. Have you seen that? No. Yeah, really weird. They're, sell they're selling milk in, uh, like, plastic bags in order to protect the environment. But you know, by what you... about the plastic, though? Well, you put... <laughs> you... The thing is, you have to buy a jug. Yeah to put the milk in, because yeah. as soon as you open the bag, then it'll just fall, it goes all floppy, and the milk yeah. will pour out. So you buy a jug, and you put the milk in the jug to save And you keep packaging. the jug in your fridge? Yeah. But then it's exposed all the time to the other smells in the fridge, surely. Well, isn't or it Or is it a jug with a lid? Yeah, it's a jug no. with a lid, yeah. Oh, if it's got a lid, that's fine. Yeah. But it costs more than just buying milk in a cardboard carton. Which that is ridiculous. Make, yeah, because you have to buy the plastic jug on top. But those plastic cartons... That's just crazy. The, you can't get your recycling people to take them because they don't biodegrade. Because apparently they've got plastics and foils in them. And the same with those juice cartons. Um, they have, like, a special film on the outside. So you can't necessarily just, 
you know the if you buy the fresh juice and the car yeah. they have the special film on the outside so they can't biodegrade either well listen the people who take your um your rubbish away to uh, eco it up mm. to um what's it called well the recycling yeah to recycle yeah. it they just stick it on the back of lorry and they go and pour it all into a hole in the ground anyway. Don't say that. Well, it's true. I, to I, China. I, I, yeah, exactly. I can't believe that, though, because <laughs> when I watch them do it in my area... They ship it to China. But in my area, they literally have different compartments for all the different Yeah, that's that right. Do. And then so they throw it all in the back of one lorry and then tip it all no, into a hole don't. in the ground. They're all being compartmentalised, so they oh, can't sure, surely yeah. just Oh, sure, yeah. Compartmentalised, yeah. <laughs> they won't just put bin the, that. Put the mental into co compartmentalise. <laughs> What is it? Compartmentalise. Com Compartmentalise is the right answer. <laughs> Eventually we got it in the end, yeah. No, that's what I read, that, they, that, that, that all that recycling is uh, just mm. a giant con. I'm sure that some uh, some does get done, yeah. but by and large, they just... <laughs> There's too much, isn't Chuck there? it in a big hole yeah. in the ground, yeah. Or they send it to China, who stamp it into, um, into toys <laughs> and send it right back to us. Oh dear, it's terrible, isn't it? We're exporting rubbish. Can you believe that? I think it's good if someone comes in up with a milk idea. Yeah, in much the same way as uh, as uh, our, our TV companies are <laughs> exporting trash to the world. Hey, that's our, that's our new business. We yeah. export we export rubbish, rubbish to the world. Yeah. Oh dear, it's terrible, isn't it? Really depressing. But um, with these milk, with this milk, have you seen it? it you yeah, buy I've it in supermarkets it. in yeah. a bag. Mm -hmm. But like, it's, what, but like it's more of the yeah, stuff. but it's more expensive than. Can you get organic milk oh, in a bag? God, I almost won't buy certainly. Oh, good. Why? What's the difference? Because you get you can get blood and um, deposits from the cow's teat that go into the and any infection that goes into your milk. That's and one that's of the most repellent likely. things you've ever said. <laughs> Deposits <laughs> from a cow's teat. I don't wish to know that. It's less likely to happen if you buy organic milk, though, because they're not on a constant sucking machine like the other poor cows right. are. Right. I want the milk from... Uh, uh, only milk from cows that have names. Looking Did you see this bar bill? Yeah, every now and again, someone, uh, someone fantastically wealthy will go into a bar and just uh, order their face off, yeah. which will then be released to the press. How, do, how does that happen then? And, um, and we also sit back in a gog that, that people have got so much money to throw around like they just don't care. Yeah. Well, the thing that surprised me most about this was, guess what? I'll tell you. It wasn't the, uh, the amount that it cost. I mean, they had, um, you know, uh, Methuselahs of Cristal Champagne. In fact, in fact they, they got through 36 bottles at £12,960. How many of them were there? Uh, it was just one bloke on his own, wasn't it? <laughs> um, I don't know, a few friends. They polished off 80 bottles of champagne, a six-litre Methuselah of Cristal worth £30,000, and two three-litre Jeroboam's worth uh, almost ten grand. Jeroboam's? Yeah. God, they must have been slaughtered. <laughs> Belt for champagne alone was £80,000. One bottle of vodka cost 1400 And so the bill for the booze came to £81,471. Tax was thirteen grand. Quite right, too. They should pay tax. Yeah. It's probably the only time they've ever paid tax. No, oh, <laughs> I take that back. <laughs> They're almost certainly above and beyond, uh, you know, at all times. But the thing that got me was service. They added on service... Ten thousand three hundred and eighty-two pounds service. Good grief! <laughs> I suppose you wouldn't care once you've gone that far. Well, I just wouldn't pay it. I mean, I just think it's an outrage. What's that they... as a percentage? I think it's well. It looks like eight and twelve and a half. I would oh, guess. Okay. But even so, ten grand just to open some bottles of wine—that's yeah. ridiculous. So the corkage on per bottle <laughs> must have been huge. Staggering. I but wouldn't also, have paid it. I would not have paid that. If you were drinking that much, though, and there weren't that many of you, why would you bother to, con to continue buying really expensive bottles when you wouldn't taste the difference? Well, because it doesn't make any difference, obviously. I mean, if you're throwing that, that kind of money, it? It, yeah. But they wouldn't have noticed if the staff had just given them a regular bottle of vodka by that stage. Yeah, speaking of celebrations, by the way, Blackpool is celebrating because Elton John is going. They're going to roll out a half-a-mile red carpet covering the North Pier for a rare visit from Sir Elton John. 
Pier bosses will line the six and a half grand carpet with lilies for the pop legend. Uh, Sir Elton, 60, has revealed that he will see uh, some bloke in a play um, uh, on the pier. Thrilled bosses have also splashed out ten grand on champagne, flowers and seafood buffet for the star. And 60 front row seats have been set aside for Elton's entourage. <laughs> you get the idea that the fat lump is uh, just a little bit spoilt? I mean, good grief. He's a queen, not the queen.